Uh -huh. would it, we are live. Okay. Would it being after 7 o'clock, call the uh, Janu uh, February 28th meeting to order, and we'll start off the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First sort of business approval of minutes for February 14th. I read them and reviewed them, they're fine. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Next sort of business is trail improvements project uh, on uh, new bog bridges for the Edgewood, Edgewood Lake project. Hi. Hi. My name is Liz Armstrong. I'm a volunteer for the Friends of North Andover Trails and we'd like your permission to clean up and improve the Edgewood Lake Trail. It was once an Edgewood residence only trail, but because of a recent agreement between the town, the trustees in Edgewood, it's now open to the public. We'd like to make sure that it's a safe route and that the wetlands are better protected than they are now. If you can look at the photographs in the proposal, I hope you can tell that the wetland areas are really in poor condition. Temporary solutions were used to improve the walkability, but they never work. So there are planks on the ground, there are painted plywood on the ground, there are bundles of tree limbs on the ground, and, and all it does is, is force people to walk around those areas and they get ever wider and wider and muddier and muddier, and so there's never really a safe one directional passage on that trail. And so we are proposing to clean out the six specific areas we've identified in the proposal. It's uh, about less than a, a mile long in duration for all those six bog, bog bridges. And uh, so we need to clean out that area, get rid of all that temporary solution, and install some bog bridging. Um, we've chosen a design that is exactly equivalent to what the trustees have used on their adjacent Weir Hill property so that there will be continuity. This is the final link in the Stevens to Stevens trail. So that's the other reason we hope to make it look the same all across. We have the support of Edgewood, we have the support of trustees, so there's letters in there. And the CPA town funds have been allocated to cover the cost of the materials, and Phonad expects to provide the labor as well as trustees. Very good. Joe? One thing and one thing only is thank you for all your work and effort now and for all the past years. It's terrific, thank you. terrific stuff. Thank you. Al. That's it. That's it. I have no questions. I'm very pleased with the project. Thanks. Neither why we've never had any problem with the trails project, so I don't foresee any. Well, anymore. I appreciate your support. Um, I've learned a lot about the conservation area from working on wetlands crossings. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you right now, I know from my work on the Bay Circuit Trail that this conservation commission is special in terms of how they support wetlands crossings on trails, existing and new trails. And we couldn't be happier with the support we get from, from you all and especially from Jennifer. So thank you very much. Yeah, we're not just the mean people that eat raw meat. <laughs> Well, there are some others along the Bay Circuit Trail that could learn from you. <laughs> Thank you. No? Yeah. No questions. Thank you. Doug? No questions. Motion? Um, what do you need? The situation out there is that there is erosion and a lot of widening of the trails. Um, you know, the enforcement order is probably the best tool, you know, ordering them to do it. They actually want to do it, so that, that makes this a lot easier. It's a vehicle to, to get it done, and it'll certainly improve the the quality and the, the passability of the, the trails. So. so do you need a motion or do you just want to issue it? Um, no, because you're going to issue it and sign and it. So and ratify then, it? Yep. Okay, very good. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is uh, request IDA for 12 mil pond. So. Um, I'm going to pull it up right here. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. So, no plans. Uh, we just got a new plan for them today. Um, given the proximity of this project to the river, I just wanted 
um, they did a de an actual delineation. We, they were previously using the plan um, done for the paving, which is a little less exact. So the plan in front of you now is, is the actual resource area. Um, I have some photos to hand out as well. Um, but I'll let you explain sure. the project. All it's right. fairly so, straightforward. Thank you. So I'm Andy Street with Civil Design Consultants uh, here on behalf of the Mill Pond Townhomes. Um, as as uh, Ms. Hughes mentioned, we we been here a few times for this development. We did, there's a almost finished paving project out there, and, and a couple other small things here or there. This is just another. Um, Another issue that they've been dealing with, this is over by Unit 12, uh, driveway access from Harkaway Road. Uh, the the Unit 12 is the one kind of in the bottom right of that structure you see in the, in the middle there, and there's some, some pretty substantial flooding that, that occurs in that, in that back, uh, the back of the unit. Um, that's a walkout basement. The, the, the driveway in the entrance is much higher, and you walk out the back. And, She's had flooding back there. It's almost reached, uh, I think it's almost reached into the unit when it gets at its worst. Um, and what they charged us with, uh, us with was trying to come up with some sort of solution um, to just direct some of the water. What's happening now is it's coming down. There's a hill along the side of the building. It's coming down the hill. There's a, a retaining wall that kind of wraps around the, the rear of the building and comes over the retaining wall. The, the area behind that uh, unit itself is actually kind of lower than the, than the grade uh, between that wall and, and the brook there. Um, so what we're proposing is, is kind of this, this kind of mixed bag solution approach, I guess, knowing that it's nothing perfect in this type of redevelopment situation. Um, the other piece that's going on is, is actually a pipe. Uh, as you look on the, I guess, kind of the top right of the design where we're showing a, a drain manhole, there's a pipe sticking out of that hill that, that we can't trace, uh, but water does come out of, and that certainly contributes to the problem. So. What we're proposing is uh, capturing that water and uh, piping it across to a, it's really a natural depression there that we just kind of want to clean up, uh, uh, grade it a little bit, put some stone in there, provide a little bit of storage, maybe berm it a little bit to hold some water back, promote some infiltration, provide a, uh, a slight depression in that berm so it, so it continues to flow down that hill. Um, as an outlet sort of structure, I guess, we'll have a, as a little structure there with a grate and a pipe that that will uh, discharge about 75 feet or so from the brook itself. Um, regrade that hill, carve the best we can swale along the side to keep it away from the wall, rebuild the wall, build the wall a little higher to keep water from going over the top of the wall, and then make sure the grade comes around the side of that wall and goes to the brook. So the idea is not to, to um, change drainage patterns at all. The water all naturally heads down to the brook that way. It's really just how it gets there and and ensuring it does get there as opposed to kind of bending around the corner and, and causing some issues for this uh, for the woman who lives in Unit 12 there. So um, the, the plan you see now, the only tweak that has been made is we had a, an actual, as, as, uh, as Jen mentioned, had a, a formal delineation of the wetland out there and showed the, these are the exact uh, buffer lines associated with that. For the paving project, we had just made some assumptions, conceded it was in there, it was a repaving job, and, and that worked for that project, but here we got more specific. So. Um, yeah, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Joe? So it's eight-inch pipe that's, come, that's in there now. You're going to relay a new eight-inch pipe into this pond, put a grate in with a manhole, and eight-inch out of it to a, to a flared end. Yeah. 75 it, feet away. That, that's what, well, it's a 104 foot, oh, 75 feet from the brook. Away correct. from the brook. Yeah, correct. Away from the yes, brook. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep, yep. And um, I mean, you're not... I mean, there's no calculation. This is all BMP. It's really just yeah, redirecting the water, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Even though you might hope to get some infiltration of the soils out there, junk. Probably. Yeah. yeah just all really, it's acting as a big open manhole. Yeah. And so, redirecting the water. We're adding some stone. You know, maybe the stone provides a little natural storage there to hold it a little longer and, and try and promote some of that. But yeah, I think that's probably the um, probably the reality of it. And you know, they they they've done things. Not necessarily in, in this commission's jurisdiction, but they are, ask us for kind of phased approaches maybe. You know, what are some things we can do? And maybe they start with grading, and if grading helps, maybe they start with the wall, and the wall helps, and they kind of build off of that. But we kind of wanted to present them with, there's a lot going on here in a small area, I guess, yeah. and we kind of present I, them with everything that, they, that could help. And, you, you know, you're, you're plenty far enough away from the brook itself. I still don't, I don't ever like to see point sources where you can avoid them, but the reality is, you know, the... The existing condition there is not ideal. Mm. So what was flowing over land is probably worse than this. You see so discharging 
that flare and um, a flared end to rip wrap, and it's pretty flat down there. I mean, your topo here is pretty good. Correct. Yeah, this is this is a ground survey we did. Okay, yeah. so it's yeah, yeah. yeah it's so the velocities out. are not you're not worrying about velocities or anything. No. This is at the bottom of the hill. They discharge right. There's a big tree in the photo as you kind of look yep. down that swale, um, and beyond that, it's just a pretty much level right to the brook. On the other side of the brook, we have a lot. There's a lot more BBW, and I was kind of thought that this, that's the situation that we'd have here. But really, this is high point, boom, you know, big bank down in. Yeah. And even though it's discharging in a flat area, the reality is even the slope in that eight-inch pipe is pretty darn flat. It is. As it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. What is it like? The plan makes it look more. Actually, it's really big. less than a foot, just about a half a foot yeah. in a hundred feet. Yeah, it's yeah. it's half really percent. flat. Yeah, yeah. I'm all set. Do you have yep. any concerns that, that what's coming out of that pipe is any kind of illicit discharge? Like it's just some kind of drainage, foundation drainage, or yeah. roof drainage? Or <laughs> My guess is it's tied to the roof leader somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But it, it right behind it is a parking lot and then, you know, another couple buildings. And it's just, it, 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 for it to be from a catch basin, it would have to go uphill, I guess. I'll put it that way. So it okay. seems like it's coming down from a roof and out that pipe over there for some reason. Because you get up to the driveway, and the driveway actually slopes down away from that area, so to the nearest catch basin, which is even further downhill. Mr. Chairman, that that discussion uh, kind of leads to my question. Um, from from your letter, the flooding behind Unit 12 is persistent, has increased over time, to a rising water has threatened the entire basement of the dwelling. Uh, the source of this water is unknown. Uh, don't you think it's kind of important that we find the source of the water yeah we've tried and we've we've done as you know we haven't we haven't gone as far as sticking a camera through that pipe smoke test um, try smoke test we testing? have not done a smoke test um, yeah I suppose we could and then to what end I'm not sure where we I mean the water need is gonna go somewhere I guess I mean, well, we, we I guess to Al's point is what we want to rule out is that it's coming from any other illicit discharge? Sure. Is it a cross connection to a sewer? Is it right. a, is it gray water from a laundry room? That's the right. sort of could stuff be, we want to be rule I and I. We don't know what it is. Sure. Um, yeah. If it's I and I, that needs to be addressed. Sure. Um, it, it needs to. It definitely needs to be addressed. I, I, I'd hesitate to make any decision on this until we made a really good faith effort to locate the source of the water. Hmm. And that's all I have. Okay. Good point. Those are great points. Yeah. yeah. Excellent point. No further questions. Doug? No further questions. Motion to continue. So moved. How much time does it? All right. Two weeks. You should be able to find out. Two yeah, weeks. We'll, we'll have someone out there. And, you know, the weather's certainly favorable these days, it seems. So we'll, we so can get out there. There'll be plenty of water coming down yeah. the next couple of days. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. If you think that's you have two. some prime suspects, you yeah. can even just die test on Friday. Yeah, get out yeah. there Friday. Get out there right. and just yeah. do some die tests. Right. Get some diet, some catch bases, and upgrade it. And, See if they find their way up to the discharge. I'd yeah. get out Thursday. I wouldn't wait till Friday. Yeah, right, right. Okay. It's going to be great about it. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not at the <laughs> next meeting, but if you do find the source and are able to identify it to them, I'm just recommending when, when a, a negative um, determination to When are you leaving? Next week. Yeah, Next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so I, mean, I won't you, be out here March 14th. But you can have the decision written in case we need yeah, it. Yeah, this one's, this one's easy. It's a determination, so there's nothing, you know, you just sign the form, basically, okay. and then I'll issue it when I get back. So we don't hold you up? So yeah. Two weeks in, okay. Um, do you have a motion and a second? You. Okay. You have a so motion from Al and a second from Deb. Al motion and a second. Al, Deb. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is uh, today. 314 for the next meeting, March 14th. Yeah, you have a continuation. Huh? Yeah. Before I say the wrong thing this time. Next one is Mass Ave. Oh, yeah, we have some continuations first. This one. This one. Yeah. Uh, 242 1721, 562 Bradford Street. Boxford Street. Boxford Street, excuse me. Strong so that would continue to, to 314. They're in front of the ZBA next week. Um, that's the one where we asked them to move the house over 16 feet closer to the property line. If they were to get that waiver again, um, you could vote to close an issue, and I would issue it when we got back. So just kind of prepping for the next one. Okay. Motion? So moved. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Uh, next one is. Uh, it's 242-1719. It's Mass Ave, Mass DOT. Uh, I, I want to remind 
uh, I know I know there's a butters here. I want you I want you to remind that the butters that is all we here is for storm water. That's all we're interested in storm water. So please address your questions because I'm sure you're going to have some for the storm water, which is uh, swales and detention ponds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not traffic, not sidewalks, not. That's got nothing to do with us. It, it's strictly storm water. So, because uh, I have a feeling this this is going to get approved tonight, and uh, and then we can go from there. Yes. Problem as long as it's related to stormwater and wetlands. Right. This is strictly what you. Uh, because that's all we have jurisdiction over. Yeah. Just strictly what you got. Okay. In the past, although the mention of, of snow disposal is also conservation. Okay. Conservation. All right. Thank you. So since the last hearing, um, the. Um, I would have to say Mass DOT was ready to come back at a prior here at one of the prior hearings, but there had been some changes um, to the plan as a result of discussions with the butters. Um, and I said probably best to revise the plan and come back when everything was finalized. So the, the plan in front of you now is, is the final plan. Um, I had noted when I was out there that erosion controls were not shown. Um, on the dwelling to be demolished. I'm not sure I'm looking at the most recent plans here, but um, did you? Um, I just didn't see which date these were. If you were. want to go to page six, I, it's yeah, I think that's where I just Notice of intent plans six is the one that's the best summary. So it's probably page. Um, the town engineer did um, look at the new drainage calculations and the train and the changes to the plan. Yeah, this one right here. Um, I'm just looking because that has 595 and I don't see the erosion controls on this one. So that leads me to believe I'm not looking at the most recent one in here. That, yeah, that is not the most recent one. Um, that I, at least yes. the difference between those plans and these plans is I asked for erosion control to be shown behind 595, and that has been added to the plan. Um, I have a copy of the plan if you want me to just bring it up. Okay. Um, we have it. Uh, yeah, we have it on screen. We have a screen in front of your table. Yeah, that we so can yeah, that's along the, the property line, right next to the house, we now have um, erosion control measures between the house and that is proposed to be demolished and the stream. So that is what Jennifer had requested that we add. But we, so it goes we along do, the whole property. Yeah, we do have those. So you have a plan that shows that? Uh, yes, I do. This okay, is so the plan submitted. I guess, do you have a copy for Jen so she can have it for a record? I have a uh, copy. She, you have it? She has. Yeah, yeah, I, I have copy. plenty of just copies. Just not scanned in here. Yeah, it's just for not whatever scanned reason, in. it's not the one that's uh, in the okay. folder here. Um, is the ditch updated on the one you have? I can go back to I have it in another folder. Um, Um, just as another point of discussion, I've, I've since informed Mass DOT that they um, have five open orders of conditions with the commission, four of which are expired. Um, it's not generally something the commission likes to hear or deal with, and um, we've similarly done some things with the, the airport, um, 
GLSD where we've said before we'll allow construction to begin on new projects. Old expired projects need to be closed out. We did it with Market and Basket. Pretty old. Just, um, some of these are pretty old. And One of them was when Jen first got on. Yeah, one's the um, Route 125 at Hillside project. Um, Actually, two separate projects out on that stretch, right? Yeah. Two well, the sidewalk five. project is still active. That's the only one. The 495 interchange project um, is is closed. So this should be the um. Who did you send the email to? To Susan, Susan McCarthy. So she, okay. she responded about the first one I sent her, which was the most recent project. Okay. But um, there, are, there are four others dating back to something like DEP file number okay. 639. That's old. Is that one right there, this, January 31st, 18? So here we go. Oh, there Mass, revised drainage, final drainage. Sort by. Might be this one, right? January 31st, is that the last revision? 1220 was the last revision. This or is 27 tenth submission resized February 2018. So I'm guessing these are the plans. Uh, it's, nope, there's one that was 220 2018 that was stamped by the engineer. So these still might not have the yeah. erosion control measures on them. Is that other file that was right before it? That was the drainage. Um, we got revised drainage okay. calculations. That's yeah, the that's the one you had it before, I think. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see it. Yeah, that's the letter from the town engineer. That's the calculations, and that's the plans. So between the drainage plan we just saw and the one you referring to the only change is that they've added erosion controls around the house correct correct okay i can visualize that, what that looks like yeah you sure i, I'm sure pretty you sure. I got sure it. You can handle it yeah i i also requested um 595 the one that we're talking about right now um the backyard ponds it, it you you end up with about four inches of standing water and i had asked uh, I spoke to you, Jennifer, about that concern, um, and I thought you were going to relay it to Kristen. I know that I mentioned it, um, no. but having that um, properly draining into the stream, the backyard. So the, the proposal for the, and Kristen, you can correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, to, with the house demolition would be to, you know, demolish the house, install erosion controls, demolish the house, and then loam and seed that area. There, um, correct. I had put into my draft order of conditions that um, potentially some wetland markers could go on the trees over there just so that there was no illegal brush dumping or anything like that, given that the lot would then be vacant. But I'm assuming the lot would be, you know, graded out. They're mm -hmm. obviously going to have to remove the foundation backfill. So um, they remove the foundation. I, I have to have a spec for the for Mass DOT with me. If anybody would like to see it, they do remo remove the foundation a certain distance below ground, and they backfill and fill it, and then uh, they loam and seed. I believe it's two or three feet below the finished grade that they remove the foundation. So, but her concern is <coughs> is diverting the water from from that house away from your house. Toward, toward the swale that's, that, the, that you guys have been that, uh, projected. Uh, is that stormwater inclusive in your calculations? The stormwater from 595? Yeah. It goes to the same watershed. It goes to the same watershed. I mean, we haven't looked at any ponding in the backyard. We didn't really take that into consideration. Yeah. We've only looked at, you know, the impervious area that we're adding. So here is that area. Changes. I'm not really sure. We haven't where looked at this if is it behind was graded the house to, If it right was graded, now. when you tear it down, mm -hmm. if it's graded toward the swale. 595 is the house that we're looking at on the left Correct. here? On the corner. On yep. the left. So, okay. And she's on the other side toward Archon Ave. So, so that's the backyard right here. Right, so if we get, if you could grade the property that you're tearing down mm -hmm. toward that swale, you're going to re redo the swale anyways. We're That's, not redoing this, we're well, not, yeah. You're going to clean it up. No, the swale's not, no. this swale's no. not being touched. This is an intermittent stream. They're not an touching stream? this. Yes. 
You, I mean, this is it. You're looking at it right here. The house so, is the reddish house to the left. Yeah. Or brownish yes. I can't house see where the there'd be any ponding behind the house. It drops right off into the stream. Yeah, it drops into no, the... No, that, that's the side lot of the house. I'm talking about the rear portion of the house. So where the garage is? Um, past the garage. So as you go down on Brand, they've got a very large backyard and it so what you have is the, the driveway and the garage are at one level and then it drops down for the backyard area yeah there's no proposal to do any grading back then well go back that, to the plan that showed the house in that lot just so i, I the could plan? follow the scrum the plan that we had open just a minute yep. ago mm -hmm. so you want to see these just Just a, if we get nope, if we get eliminated a problem, we won't, won't, you, won't, you guys are going through all this like, development. You know, okay, so the house down. As we're looking at this plan here, we see the. I'm not sure if you can read the plan, but it shows the house. Yeah, and then there's it shows the garage. You know, three circles and a garage. Then the backyard is what you're referring to as, be, is where the words demolished garage are. That's yes. the, that's behind the area that, that. That behind that. So there's a significant drop from the driveway to that back area of the lot but it's is the ponding caused from the runoff from the home in the garage that we're well, going to I'm going to ask no, the question it's, it's this project proposes itself. to demolish the house and the garage yes yes we're and both. to what extent are you looking to regrade so just those just yes. where those buildings themselves well, are take off the yacht itself they got to the driveway out too and the driveway right. but that Karen, so the front portion of the lot you didn't identify oh, yourself for the record I'm, I'm Karen Laurel from 591 Massachusetts Avenue. Yeah, but they can they can grade that from the driveway. But right the now they're not proposing it. It's basically, if you take a limit of disturbance from the garage to the driveway and run it northeasterly, as we're looking at the photo, as at, looking at the plan, the only area they're going to regrade is the areas they've disturbed. Not as as of currently proposed. Nothing mm -hmm. in this other side yet. Correct. But that but the garage and the driveway are higher than the. Uh, the backyard. Yeah. I am. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they they can grade. They're going to tear it up. Right. So you're Why saying lower the grade. That so the water comes down that area and goes into the brook. But by well, regrading, we, we, that's a lot of land disturbance in a resource area. Right. Also, we, would, we would never be, approve that. There would be no treatment before it goes to the brook. We wouldn't. We wouldn't approve that. We would never. Approve um, that. There, there would need to be some kind of treatment. There, there would need. I mean, that, that would be a direct run. We don't allow that at all. It's like a point source. I know, but they got to restore that whole area anyways. Got it. But uh, they're going to have to divert that water another way in before it's directly into that stream. So this is a, this even, is a fairly if, level lot where the house and the mm -hmm. garage and the driveway are. We're talking, I mean, it sits right on Mass Ave. This thing is a, outside of the stream in the back of the house where it drops right off into the stream. I mean, if they were to grade this level, this isn't going to be a stormwater. Well, she's talking about... A drop to the side yard where there's ponding taking place. Is that? Do we acknowledge that? Um, I mean, I was out there. I, I have the photos of the backyard. I can certainly, you know, take more well, photos. But well, I mean, all, all I mean that's, that's existing condition. I I didn't observe uh, anything like that uh, when I was out there. The but one photograph you took that showed the house on the left was was great. If it was. I know taken. where she's talking about because I came in the driveway. So, so the only drop off I can envision, and I haven't been out there all that often is from the rear of the house, rear of the garage, to the brook, it drops off abruptly. But from the from Mass Ave, through the house, through the garage, to the driveway, to that side yet, I, I don't think, it, I, I can't visualize it dropping off so much. Uh, if you drive in the driveway and just keep on going, your car will drop foot. But that's gonna be, according to the applicant, after they demolish that, that's gonna all be regraded. The regrading should should be the remedy for the ponding, I would think. The well, ponding, well, that's well, what I'm saying. Well, brings it into the um, creek. Right now, it's like a basin, okay? So it's higher on four sides. Yeah, but that's what that's why they're regrading. That that should cure that. Well, well that, that was the question. We are not proposing to regrade exactly. the backyard. Yeah, no, what? Like Sorry. It was. Hold on, what? We are not proposing to regrade the backyard. We are not proposing to change no. the existing condition of the backyard. Please. 
the only area we're proposing to touch is from the garage forward mm -hmm. toward to the road. To I guess that's a point. We understand what your intent is, mm -hmm. and we understand what the concern of the abutter is. What we're trying to do is understand the question and whether the project properly addresses it or not. Yeah, we're trying to determine if maybe mm -hmm. we need to condition something for you. Yes, I understand. To help you do the project better. I understand. We're just here to help. Keep everybody <laughs> happy. Um, so that's the location here. Are you removing the driveway? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That doesn't show. That doesn't show. It just says remove the house and the garage. I'm glad you're removing the driveway. All the impervious surface that's on the lot currently today will be removed and will be grassed. That's should cure it. Okay. I that's, think so, too. That should cure it. I think that'll 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 cure the problem. I think the water will will infiltrate into all this new uh, seed help. and yeah. grass that they're going to plant in place of the house, the driveway, and the garage. Well, there if there were something, um, okay. So this is the backyard, and this is the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. This this is like a dish. Okay. So if there was just even a little bit of of Grading right here. But that, that's in the buffer zone. <coughs> Pardon me? That's part of the wetlands in, in the buffer. We can't go in there. Correct? No, we wouldn't normally. No. But I think I think with the removal of the house, the driveway, and the garage, there'll be enough infiltration that should have reduced the pond. I'm, I'm not so end. sure of that. So, well, they're taking away. You started falling. talking about the mess. DOT standard spec for demolition of a structure, and mm -hmm. I guess I don't know what that is. I haven't seen it. It's not part of this filing for me anyway. At least that I haven't seen. Um, so they take the vertical walls of the foundation some distance down below Correct. proposed finished grade, mm -hmm. leaving the floor of the they cellar in place. They drill holes in the floor every a go. certain distance. I forget. So it does infiltrate. It does. Yes. It doesn't just hold water. Correct. Okay. They will drill holes every certain distance. Okay. And any of the piping, you know, the sewer piping, everything gets removed. Yes, the cutting cap at mm -hmm. the street, so there's no exactly. chance of water trapping and going down the Correct. sewer. All right, Correct. so I'm be beginning to be a bigger believer in the infiltration capabilities. Can I have a it, copy of that spec yeah, for the for that, for me? I'm just going to read the areas. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, we definitely need that. But it isn't a right in the resource area. So you understand that part? What they're doing? Yes. Now. Um, if you look at the drawing, it doesn't say that the driveway. No, I know. I asked. That's the around. first question I asked. We can. We can add that to the plan. Yeah. 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 Well, it just Please. didn't say yes. that, Please. so I was very concerned. We've had a lot of snow storage in that area, and it looked like it was open for more snow snor snow storage. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we get that. Can that. I ask a question? Yeah, you know what we'd like to uh, 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 to the podium, if you don't mind, uh, just so we can keep order here. Um, I know that we didn't require the previous speaker to do it, but I guess we're going to have to. Just uh, go up there, give us your name and address, and then have at it. Hi, my name is Karen Ferris. I'm the one for Indy Wab. Thank you. Um, I'm more or less I'm on the corner of Mass Ave and 125. Okay. My unit is right there. Uh, I've spoken to Mass DOT. And they told me that the area behind my building will end up with more water on it when they're done with this project because the town won't let them go in and, I'm going to use the word clean up, um, behind our building and clean out the stream a little bit so that the water would flow. Um, I've lived in my building and my unit for 30 years. I have seen that stream up to the top and running into almost to my back door. And I'm very concerned that nothing's going to be done, according to Mass DOT, to prevent any additional water. I've been told my unit could end up being flooded. Well, as you saw in the first started, which seems like years ago, that was exactly what I jumped on because I remember your condominium association coming in here years ago with a concern, and I remember that. Actually, we had a board meeting um, Monday night, mm -hmm. and the trustees asked the management company to get. Um, an engineer we've used for various projects on the property to come out, look at the mass DOT plans, look at our property, and see what we can do to, um, I, I'm going to use the word mitigate, you know, to lessen the impact on our property. So what we did, recognizing the sensitivity of the problem that you're describing, and in my recollection of that from 
about 10 years ago when your association did some improvements, we held DOT in the design consultant, these folks, mm -hmm. to the standard, look, we're going to have real strict stormwater review. You're going to analyze it. You're going to prove that you're not changing the drainage cap. So whatever you heard from DOT, somebody spoke out of school because this has been designed, it's been analyzed, it's been reviewed, and there is no increase in water. Okay. So I don't know what or who made such a comment, but that's in, in it's fact, contrary it's, to anything we've participated in in the past well, several again, months. Well, again, two years the, the demolition of the houses is going to mm. take away a lot of impervious service, and there's, uh, surface and there's going to be more infiltration. Um, it, sh it, it shouldn't you should have less. It sh you should have less, I mean, because there's more area where it should go. Yeah. Um, Just so you so know the drain. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, you got to, we, we got to, we can't have a free-for-all, I know you. <laughs> so you were going to comment on th th this question, right? Yes, I was. So the just so you know, the, the removal of the building in that impervious area was not considered in the drainage calculations. Yeah. So there will be even more reduction than we show in our drainage calculations because it was kind of a last-minute decision to, to do that. Okay. <coughs> but there's no, just, Jen, so I understand it, and I'm not speaking incorrectly, w there's no proposal to touch the intermittent stream. There has never been, and I was okay. trying to bring back up those photos because there's nothing blocking that stream. It flows, you know, freely. The impediments to stream flow come at the bottom, and you, you've seen this thought or nav situation at the bottom. The mm -hmm. town had a project down there years ago trying to improve the, the drainage and, and the way things flowed down there. But, I mean, the, the, the point is it's a constriction. It all comes down to a pipe and it outlets at the end, it takes a right-hand turn and it flows in a different direction. It's, I mean, it, there is a restriction. And so that, that isn't Mass DOT's fault, it isn't the town's fault, it's just the way the whole system is set up. But elevation-wise, compared to where that restriction or constriction is in change of direction, compared to the intersection here where the house is being demolished, it's got to be 15 feet down radius. Oh, it's yeah. way, yeah, way so down gradient. Any constriction down there doesn't reverberate and the, this far the up the stream as it no. flows at the upper section of this is is a full-on stream channel. Like for whatever reason, this isn't going back to the um, the photos I just had up. But you know, it, it's it's flowing, mm -hmm. um, and there there is definitely you? flooding farther down. No, she can stay there. I just have a question. Well, we, no, we really just, want everybody we'll to. She's oh, finished. But it has to do with the, the yeah, I know, but we have to. Water. I know, but she's got okay, to finish. Okay. Yeah, we, we need to do this so that so, the record's clear. Okay, we, we this yes. is the, the recording is the record. Okay. okay. So my understanding from from the board is that the mass DOT individual that I spoke to gave me wrong information. Yes, and, and it was just reinforced by her. I, okay. I, I think you really got some bad information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From all of the information that's officially submitted mm -hmm. as part of this application and is on our record and part of the permanent record indicates there's a reduction in stormwater impacts through the mitigation measures they proposed. Yeah. Only improved by tonight's discussion about demolishing the house. It's only going to make mm -hmm. that better. That was, okay. that was the first question that, that Commissioner Lynch raised. When, Seems uh, like two years ago. Well, I think part of the problem. Project. Part of the problem was that, according to the management company, is we. I, I'm, I'm going to say we. Um, we're never even notified about this project. They don't have to notify about us. No. no. State. State, state. state law. Yeah, the state can do anything they want. I know. I work for the state. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it's I actually know. in the Mass, we, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act that um, linear the Mass Highway does not need to notify abutters. If you think about their work on roads like, you know, interstates and who want, you know, it, it would be onerous beyond belief to notify every abutter within 100 feet of a roadway project. Yeah, you'd have to have a meeting at, uh, just, at the auditorium or something at the high school. So they do legal ads. The legal ad was in the newspaper, and they, I know, re, you know, there are meetings, the meetings that the town held meetings, so those were advertised. I mean, it's not like they were keeping the project secret and just didn't tell anybody. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, okay. can I just add one thing? There, there is one thing that you did get told that I think is true. We will not allow the state or anybody else to go in and restructure the stream. We're not going to allow the stream to be dredged or widened or dug out or anything. So that part's true. The stream is off limits. Okay. So that, that part of what you heard is true. We're not letting anybody touch that. Okay. Thank All you right. very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Now we have 
What, My question like, just has to do with Ste Stephanie. Um, Would you come up here, please? <laughs> Stephanie C. Wade, 615 Mass Avenue. My question just has to do with that stream, um, because I know that they're putting in bigger pipes coming across Chickering Road, so underground, that's gonna be flowing into that stream. I just, I'm, I'm more concerned about them, because I, I see when that floods as I'm going around the corner. Is, is that stream, not the dredge, gonna be able to hold the water that's now coming out of the bigger pipes? And the, the more drains. I'm doing it, I'm asking for them basically. So they're, you're not discharging to the stream, you're discharging to the stormwater management area. There are two discharges. We are, we are still continuing to discharge directly to the stream. The existing the, ones. Yes, we are, ups, we are upsizing the pipes. Yep. Because they are undersized today and there's pressure flow at the end of the pipes and it gets kind of crazy and it backs up into actually Miss Seabate's property and the catch basins when you, they right. have large storm events. Um, we designed the stormwater treatment to mitigate it. We've sent more water to that stormwater treatment area from Chickering Road to mitigate so the what, and balance the, the it. To the treatment area. So the, yes. So you've, you've added it in one sense, but it's just subtracted mm -hmm. from another. Correct. So the net is still Correct. at least what it was, if not better. Correct. That was, you know, I'm just wondering because they, is it that you can't clean out the stream for them because it's wetland? Is that Correct. the issue? It's protected. Yes. Oh. Okay. It's not just, that sounds so we, vague. We so don't, the, the Wetlands Protection Act doesn't allow for the alteration of resource areas over 5,000 square feet. Um, so currently they are altering a resource area. It's an old drainage structure that developed wetland <coughs> characteristics. They're altering 1,800. So there is some wetland alteration as a part of this. They're basically enlarging what's the existing drainage along 125 and making it more of a storage area rather than just a channel along the edge of the and road. It, and as you well know, it hasn't been maintained in 40 years. So I, I don't want to make it sound as vanilla as because the rules yeah. say no, it's not. It's because the, the intent, besides resource area protection, which is only part of it, the other part of it is the more you improve flows upstream, it's only going to telegraph the problem and magnify it further downstream. So you're taking the problem and making it somebody else's problem and making it worse for somebody else. So the goal has always been at your project location to have a net zero change when it comes to hydrology. You know, don't make it any worse. You're not obligated to make it better. We encourage you to make it better, but you, if, if you can't do it, we can't let you make it worse. That's the standard we've always held. That's the standard this project has followed. Okay. You answered my question. She did. Hi. On, on the October 11th meeting, um, conservation meeting, um, Mr. Lynch, you, you pointed out that really a third party review of this was necessary. I've looked at the drainage calculations. I am an engineer and I've, I've looked at them. Um, I am concerned by some of the statements that there will be flooding. Um, so I think that Karen is correct because that's reflected in that report. Um, now you're saying there's no net change. Um, the statement is there that there will be flooding. Um, you know, I, it's, you, the model modeled a few point, um, static point conditions and found that in those point conditions, um, there's little change. I, I think it, it, it is very close to the same under the same conditions. And it was engineered to be so that it, it matched at those points. Mm -hmm. um, but we happen to know that we flood. Okay, Th this is known and it's been for quite a while. So um, I really applauded your statement on October 11th that we needed a third party um, reviewer of the drainage um, issue. We still have the issue of snow melt, which according to the state um, conservation um, is not allowed. So I don't know how, I, I, I haven't found any document that says the state is allowed to store snow 
everything that I've read said the contrary, that, that the state is not allowed to snow, store snow, neither is the town, but we see that it indeed does happen, and that is exactly when I get large amounts of, m of water in my back, we're 595. So if we stop storing snow um, right there on conservation land and the 25 feet around it, I would have no issue with you with it ponding in the back at 595 because it wouldn't happen. So um, you, I don't know how the snow melt disappears as a problem, but it is truly our problem. Okay, it is our true problem. <laughs> so let's, um, you raised a few points. Let me try to address the ones that my name was involved in. So um, when I made the comments in October, it was in, probably framed in the context where I was referring to the town engineer's letter that spoke to a cursory view. And I, I, I really remember singling that word out. And I knew it needed more than that. Right. Typically, and I say typically, for most other applicants on complicated stormwater, we will send it out for third party review, mm -hmm. the applicant pays for that. Again, the state is exempt from that sort of review. They don't have to pay for that review. So the, the, in this project, the town opted to use the town engineer. He's a PE who did a more arduous and vigorous re review. Not according to last week. When, when John wrote up his results, um, and I, I happened to speak to John after that. So, so I he, know subsequent to the October statement, at least one follow-up letter came back that you know, that concluded a lot three. of these issues. Mm -hmm. At least one, exactly. There's three. So I, you know, I, I'm satisfied. At least I've been led to believe that we should be satisfied that the level review is what we would normally get, and mm -hmm. and that there's been some back and forth and in, in conversation between the consultant and in the town as the reviewer, and, and we're satisfied. Right. I, I wouldn't say that the the kind of review is what we normally see because this isn't a. a a norm, this isn't a project on an undeveloped lot or a, a redevelopment of a, you know, let's say at the mills or something like that. This is a highway project. So this, we're, the standard is the maximum extent practicable. And I think what we would sometimes see probably in private review versus this review would, would be that, you know, our consultant would be proposing alternatives, alternatives let's say. Right, exactly. Th this isn't, th they're reviewing the project that's before us, not saying that there's another project out there that could be done. They're reviewing what's placed So I, I hear them. every word you say, and the folks at home do too, but I was uncomfortable when you said, and I know what you meant, is um, it's, it's not the same level of review that we would do for other projects, but specific to stormwater, it's, a, it's no less than it's, what we would have done for any other right. project. He's reviewed the numbers, he's pointed out discrepancies, mm -hmm. he's pointed out when he's seen things that didn't line up on the plans with the report, the same types of things we yeah, would get back from our reviewers. That were, yeah, mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, that all worked out. What I'm saying is he's he's not sort of going the step that we would on, on let's say, a, a private project where the, our stormwater reviewer might say, you know, there's more you could do here. So he, there's another, yeah. you could use a different a type private of... private project, we wouldn't let the stormwater management near the brook. Right. We would want it elsewhere, but there's no other place to put it. Correct. So we don't make those types of recommendations. Correct. So that, that part of it, so I think I'm satisfied with the review and the comments of ratings in October resulted in what we're, where we're at today yes. and without deviation. The, the other part is, the, is snow stockpiling. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Is snow banks? What, what's kind of snow stockpiling? Um, I think at the mall is those no, okay. okay. What they're supposed to, to do is just push the, get the, the truck along um, the road, and where it ends up, it stays there. Okay. Well, what happens there? You box the corners. Is, you box the corners. Well, they have a there's a sidewalk on that on mm -hmm. that side, and the sidewalk plot comes through. It goes from from Mass Ave to almost Harrison's, I believe. That's a town yeah. sidewalk. The plot. town. It's a town, town sidewalk. It's, it's the, the town that's pushing the snow side. into into their property. Um, the state does it too. The state does I watch it at one o'clock in the morning because I'm not working. The state comes along with the because John and I had this conversation about the snow removal when I went to talk to him. He said, "What did, what do you see, Steph?" I said, "One o'clock in the morning, the state." brings in the bulldozer depending upon the size of the storm, takes the takes the snow, just literally comes up, takes the snow, pushes it. Puts, it's been pushing it on my property for years. Yeah. They just take it and they just, they're not looking at sidewalks, they're not looking at 
property lines. Well, I know. I know that this, it's a constant contest between the town and the state. The town, so they bring the in town clears the sidewalk, push the, 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 the snow the onto is. the roadway, and then the plow comes and pushes the up to the curb, back onto the sidewalk. So they, they keep they play games. Now I will until tell somebody you this last storm because I was up and I hear beep beep. Okay, they're here. I looked out, and this is the first time in all the times I've seen them do it, a state truck was with them watching what they were doing and putting the snow on the corner and not on my front, which go. was shocking. Now, on their side, what they do is the exact same thing. So they come, so when they do my side first, and then they come this side, and they do the same thing. So the snow has now come where the curb is, so there's the sidewalk and the little town guy has come. So what they do is they come along and they pick it up and they dump it where on the other side of the sidewalk. I mean, it's not her fault. That's just the practice they've been doing for years. Because that corner, if you look at that corner, when you're cleaning, I mean, Louie, you should know this. So do I. Okay, all right. You guys, <laughs> so you guys clean it, but then the state rail figures it out that you can't see. You cannot see around the, the side snow bank. So they bring in the floaters. It's very late at night, and they pick up, especially if they're going to be getting another storm. So if, we, if they forecast another 10 to 12 inches, those state guys are there. I guarantee. So in the year 2015, when we had the storms, constant storms, they were there all the time. Well, yours, in your, they're going to put a turn up there, so she's going. Her problem will probably be eliminated, and I think on both sides, the right lane is going to go. I, I would. I'm sitting here, by the, I'm a public works director, so I, right. I, I, I live and breathe this stuff too. So the, the reality is, none of us want to do it. We all want to do the right thing, but when safety and maneuverability and snow operations come into play, you do what you have to do. But you, you can't be reckless, and that's the fr phrase I'm going to use. If you know there's a waterway there, you can't block it to prevent water from getting in when you need it to get in. But it so, does. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that. So no matter what we review here, we're talking past practice, never mind yeah. this project, no matter what we do or say here or condition here, when it gets to us, to the DOT projects folks who build it according to their plan, for it to convey through operations to snow operations to contractors and then to, to follow up I'm just telling you it's pie in the sky and there's nothing we can do about it one thing we can do is we've got tree barriers okay that gets into my tree issue right um, in that same thing and I think it was again you um, stating that um, this is a federal uh, project and we needed a, th a tree mitigation plan that wasn't me but okay if it, but, well, but you're it, right if it is a federal project and you're okay. removing trees you have and there to. was a statement that there were only 43 trees well let me tell you i've gone out and counted on my property alone they're removing 40 trees okay and most of them are within the they're they're within the um hundred uh, foot conservation area so those trees protect us in many, many ways, okay? One of them is snow. So now that we remove all the trees and we don't replace any barriers, the snow packing is gonna be far greater. You're gonna, let me see if I understood what you just said. Because the trees that are there now are physically there and act as a barrier, act as an obstruction, right? that a plow can't knock them over, yeah, they're they try to high. avoid them, so as a result, <laughs> They don't put snow there, but now that they're gone, they're going to be more inclined to. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is indeed what I'm right. saying. So what I don't For know, other is, are any of these too. trees and resource areas that are being removed, are they, are they shown on our plans? They yes, they are, are shown on the plans. No, the plans has... are not accurate. The plans are indeed not accurate. They show like about 17 trees on my property when over 40 are being removed. They are not indeed accurate. You could, you're welcome. So we're only come to my house. So let me ask you. Let me With ask all due respect, we're only going ten feet into your property. Are there forty trees? I, absolutely, it's a property? barrier. It's a two, two. It's no, a the trees in the eyes of DOT and, and it's a, under, no, no. a certain size. A size. size. Yes. So if we're talking saplings. Yeah. No, no, we are not talking saplings. I've I planted forty evergreens, 
15 years ago. I At went to the town and I was told that I could plant um, three feet away from the sidewalk. And I planted 40 trees. I missed on one tree, okay? Um, I did talk to John about that. Yes, there is a drawing showing a few trees that you claim are bushes. And yes, things have grown in closer to the sidewalk. I didn't plant those. Okay, there's, okay. there's actually a pro, it's not this commission, but there's a process for the trees. Correct. Is this a project that hits funding from a source that requires a tree mitigation plan? Do it's we know federal. that? Is it this, is it does have FHWA funding. It is, is on federal the So it does require that. So We did have there, a tree arborist come out. You had a tree arborist. You yes. conducted a tree hearing. Yes. There's so well, any discrepancies in plants should have been flagged there. But it, it's indeed wrong. All you have to do is I, come to my property. He didn't, he didn't, there it's was no discrepancies. He pointed out all the trees that we needed to add. We added the trees to the plans. He went through and determined what trees were public living shade trees. We determined we were not impacting more than five living public shade trees that were healthy. So he did a whole analysis of the health of the trees and everything. So in the end, no mitigation is required because we're not impacting more than five public trees. So you've tree completed trees. Yes. the tree hearing in accordance with the requirements of the Federal Highway Administration? I believe it was... There is no, the town doesn't have an official tree, tree warden. warden. So we did we did go through this already. I just don't remember the exact outcome of it because it was two years ago. The absent so tree point, warden, the board of selectmen, are you tree, are you tree warden? I believe it was brought up before the board of selectmen. So if in, so if there's a public hearing for tree removals, so that would be the body if there is no tree warden. I'll have to, I can dig up, okay. I can it's, send it's the. It's the board of selectmen. It is. Tree, shade tree so if it's then complete, the matter of trees has been put to bed. The trees that are shown are the trees, and well, but those trees aren't reflected on the plans. They're very large, 40-foot evergreens, um, significant girth. They're not on the plan. We're gonna have to do a sidewalk. I mean, I hate to say this. But I mean, they're there. <laughs> they're there. You know, 40 foot high. <laughs> I, it, to me, as long as the stormwater is gonna do what it said, what they say it's gonna do. Yeah, but part of the stormwater discussion, and, and, I, and I hear the, 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 the about a question, and, and it's a legitimate question. I may not believe it, but I, I, my inclination is to say that, sure, if you've taken a tree down that's previously acted as a barrier, and it's allowed to be taken down, then so be it. We have nothing to say about that. But if they, if they are, in fact, and I don't know that until we look at the plan or verify it through some means, if they are, in fact, taking down more trees than what is approved through that hearing, then they might have a legitimate complaint, but I, I don't know that yet. The other problem is, is, is it not, not, to, not to be... Not only from the snow stockpiling in the resource not areas. Not to pick on you, but it's, Joe, there isn't that much snow that's being picked up. In it's place. enough to flood us. It is well, enough I think, to I think the, the balance issue, I think the issue is the flooding from before. And Correct. I think the regrading of the, of the hot, well, with the removal of the driveway, the removal of the house, the removal of the garage, I think is going to alleviate the ponding in the backyard. All the, even if they clean that intersection and put all the snow in her yard, it's not a lot of snow. Oh, the, it is a snow. Um, do you know what? On, I, I don't happen. The part that they put a lot of snow on in my particular yard is 100 foot away from the conservation, so it doesn't count as far as snow melt in this context. But what they do is they actually come way down Mass Ave, okay, and they ram the snow as high as they can up my hill to store the snow as close to my house Well, that's Well, that's a town issue. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's the town or the state. Mass Ave? That's, that's Mass Ave. It is, is a, Mass Ave, but that's the, a town, I mean, I don't know if the, ta the, the town plaza. Is. Yeah, I, I, know, I told I know John that for, about that. I know that for a fact. I, I, I told John about it because he's telling me that no snow <laughs> snorge. And I'm saying, I watched this truck come barely at my is it, house. Is it blue? I, I don't know. I, I'm a I, I don't know, Louie. Why do you ask? <laughs> I'll, we'll check next time. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> well, I have two trucks out there. No, I'm I'm holding my breath, hoping they don't go through my house. Really? I'll yeah. have to speak to them. So I don't, I don't yes. want to fix houses. 
I don't mean to be flip. I, th I think the reality is, is if they've met the requirements under the Federal Highway Administration for a tree hearing and they've satisfied that and, and have checked off that box, then what we have is what we have and we're not going to tell them to plant more trees. No, 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 they, what, I'm trying to, I, what I'm trying to say is the plans don't reflect reality. So if, if the plans got put forward and are not, I mean, they're not even true by 50%, um, then how could it successfully have passed because it doesn't reflect reality? I, I, I had spoken to, to you and, and Miss Seaway before about uh, pushing the subject. Uh, I think we've done, the, the commission has pretty much done all that they can. We, we got a decent stormwater plan that works. Um, the, the snow, we can only go by what each of them tell us. And, and, and the state tells us, and she just admitted that the town does it. Yes, both. Does Mass Ave. So yeah. the only question I would have would be of Jen. So, uh, and, uh, and I bet my right arm that you guys are gonna appeal this decision if we approve it. So I think we're really wasting our breath Willie, here. I'll just tell you one thing. I, I don't want to appeal it because my head hurts, okay? My concern Okay, and I, and I voiced this to John the other day, no disrespect to Kristen, is that, and I, I know you've gone back to back and forth, and I said this to John the other day, why don't you get guys just get an independent person to look at these and satisfy us, okay? Only because, first she said I was getting drain water, then she said I wasn't getting drain Then John said, I said, John, okay, now I'm I went to him, I, I was great the, that morning, I went to him at nine o'clock. And I said to him, John, look, I'm done with this. I'm done tired of talking to you, talking to her, talking to her. I just want to, you're going to do this anyways, so just tell me, am I getting drain water on my project? He said, well, I looked at her plans and they look fine. And I said, what are you saying to me? Uh, as an engineer, I'm not an engineer. Just tell me. Vernon was with me. I practically blew it in the down planning. I said, just tell me what I should be concerned with. I'm asking the question, is the project putting in a new low point? And he said to, I mean, Vernon and I have walked it 10 million times now. Is the project, the, the, the low point that's in that right-hand curve going to cause a problem coming onto my property water? He assured me that the answers that Kristen gave me was not gonna cause that. So then I said to him, okay, so they're going to take all my trees away, and there's no replacement trees. So they're taking the big tree, and they're taking all of that buffer that now I have to that corner. That's part of the right-of-way, though, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So is that going to cause more drainage issues? The fact that are they going to grade it so it grades as it is high? This was my concern, because right now that section is higher than that corner where they're putting in the right turn so are they going to leave it high or are they going to grade it flat he said to me well they're putting in a sidewalk so it has to be graded up is that am i correct on the corner it, it grades from that higher point down, down. to the sidewalk correct okay. the sidewalk will never ever drain to your property the sidewalk is designed to drain to the roadway i want to be careful that i heard that answer correctly i'm hearing a question being asked and maybe answered a little differently Starting in the front yard, there's a front yard grade that's there now. Correct. You're not changing the grade that's in the front yard now. No, we're tying the it The sidewalk as as that's being proposed, is it higher than the grade of that yard now? Not on the very corner. There is one spot where the sidewalk okay. is higher. So even, so mostly it's at the same height or just a little bit higher, but in every instance, the sidewalk is pitching towards the street, not towards the yard. Correct. The, the and then there's a grass strip between the sidewalk and the curb. No. This is no. a sidewalk right up to the curb. Correct. Yeah. Then the curb drops down six inches six inches mm -hmm. to roadway pavement that sheds in both directions to catch basins correct so nothing gets to the property there's correct. a handicap ramp and water flows around the new curve but not into the yard because that handicap ramp still would have to rise curb height six inches to get mm -hmm. to the sidewalk elevation before it back into the yard so that's correct. impossible and we, ha we have added additional catch basins on either side of the handicap ramp. We have double grates on all the catch basins to make sure that it's captured rather than getting into Miss Seabay's property. 
the product does not add any water to Miss Seabate's property. The only thing that it does do, there is a low spot in her yard that's located around, you can't see the stationing that well, around 603 plus 00, zero well, where the, the sidewalk itself is going to be a little bit higher than her property by about four inches. And so there's a little tiny low spot. And so the water will pond there before it does eventually fl flow over the sidewalk. And the product initially had a ditch that was designed to go along the front of her property because we felt that that was a change to the drainage conditions on her property and she informed us that she did not want to have the ditch on her property. And we explained, we gave her three alternatives basically. We said, well, you can have the ditch as it's proposed. We can put under drain behind the sidewalk so that the low spot does drain and connect that under drain into the closed drainage system, but it would still require an easement on her property. Or we can do nothing and not have an easement on your property and you will have some minor ponding in your yard during storm events and she opted to have the minor bonding. Yes, Based on that, know. today the know. sidewalk is not higher than her, than her property. So her property continuously drains today. It does pond on the corner be, uh, because the catch basin's back up, so she does have ponding on her property, it's just in a slightly different location. Any one of those three alternatives this commission would approve. And I can speak on behalf of the commission. Those are all reasonable alternatives and there's not much more you could offer. Correct. The that. other thing too is the, the land has been brought down because of the police cars that have used that as a parking lot space. Well, so I that I mean I'm sure they're gonna take that into consideration. You, you do know that. So where that where that point is where you can make tonight. that corner, that property that amount of property on that land has gone down because the cars have been parking on it okay. for years. So I think that I just wanna make sure that's graded properly. Because it's not natural for that land. When I when I took out the trees 20 years, 25 years ago, there was no lowering of the property. There's from the years of the police cars. Right. This granite, mm -hmm. this granite curbing, mm -hmm. is it just in the intersection, or is it running down 125 some, it some runs, distance? It runs through the entire project. Through the entire project mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. It's vertical granite curbing. It's, vertical. it's not slope granite. Correct. So police cars mounting that curb and driving across the, they're gonna not, not going to be possible okay. in the future. And they're going to be on the sidewalk. It's not going to be possible in the future. No. Correct. Okay, just quickly back to trees. You said that you did, um, I, I absolutely know the plans don't reflect reality on my property as far as the trees are concerned. I absolutely know that. Um, I, I invite everybody over. We can have a tree uh, viewing party if they'd like. Um, you know, I'll serve cocoa. <laughs> but it doesn't reflect it. So um, what can we do about the trees? Can I see the plan that you put forward in the past? And then what can we do about snow storage with the absence of all the trees? There's not much we can do with snow storage because like on the solution. We're going to do what we're going to do in every project. We're going to simply we, say there'll be no snow storage it. within you know, 25 foot, no disturbed zone of a resource area. And the reality is, is it's unenforceable. But it's we'll not, condition it. Like I said before, but, like I told you and, and, and uh, Ms. Messina before. Well, then we do need do what they tree, want. we need a barrier. We need a barrier replacement. Currently we have barriers, okay? All along that area on our side, uh, there are barriers. There's trees uh, all around, all along except where the driveways are you have trees but you're saying there's going to be sidewalk there there's going to be sidewalk there's yeah. currently sidewalk but can they, i they, they, they're going to they're more sidewalks pile onto the, because I mean, they're adding a lane to where that brown way. house is they keep those sidewalks clear right so as but, part as part of the project there is a right-of-way process that does occur and the trees that are going to be removed on your property you will be compensated for and you will have the right to plant trees again in the future with that money mass DOT said, just does not get into the practice of planting trees on private property that that's is their fine policy. i was told that i couldn't uh, plant for over five it's a, years it's a result of the tree hearing that came about but that's already been done I, I, I will look into that it and try to find some everything. I don't know if the, a tree hearing was determined that it was required because we weren't impacting more than the five public shade trees. I believe the hearing is only required if you are impacting more than that. I believe that the town was satisfied with, we had a report that was done and they were satisfied with the report when we gave it to them, so. I mean, conservation says tree removal is, is a conservation issue. Um, is it only shade trees or it, it, is it also 
um, evergreens. Resource. Trees that are in a resource area are in our jurisdiction. Right, anything and mine that's are not within. In a resource area, anything that's not in a resource area, we have nothing to say. So about. these are but trees that are in the outer 100 foot. Um, if they're they're on this plan, they're kind of to the top left. They are within 100 feet. Um, Were they, you know, they are not in the 25 foot no disturb zone, and as part of any project, we would allow, we would allow them they're to outside be of, they're, What you're saying they're is outside they're outside of the, of the no 50. Zone. They're outside Where of the 50. Where they are yeah. clearing in the no disturb zone would be within the drainage swale, which technically should have been kept clear but never was. So trees did grow up in that drainage swale where they shouldn't have. And that will be cleared and will be maintained. There are multiple conditions in the order of conditions that native seed mixes will be used, that the O&M will be followed. Um, the O&M is attached to the order of conditions. It would be recorded. Um, it is enforceable that way as it, um, you know, other than that. But the, nothing's proposed to be cut in, in the notice terms. Yes, because they're taking the old drainage swale and that clearing one area. it. it hasn't been but it's because that's where the stormwater management area is. Correct. Except for that. That is the only area. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. So it's not. It's not within our purview. Okay. Well, can then I get the um, yes. tree stuff yes. that was you can do that. Um, done? Yes. So from the perspective of conservation, with you know, our jurisdiction, Lou, we've, we've... Her questions are non-jurisdictional. Exactly. We hit what's within our jurisdiction. We right. hit with, with, if there's a separate question, that question becomes DOT versus the Board of Selectmen exactly. question and, and not us. Exactly. We've got a, you know, we, we are satisfied with the trees that are within our jurisdiction are being adjusted only because of stormwater management, and every other tree is outside of the no disturb area. Well, or even more. I mean, there are trees on this lot um, that they're taking. I, I assume there are there are some trees on that corner um, mm -hmm. where the where the sidewalk in, is being enlarged. But yeah. not her property. It's where the brown house is. No, this this is on the on the corner. There's a spruce. There are a couple of trees there. I'm not going to say that there aren't any other trees in jurisdiction that are being removed. There's a nine-inch maple. There's a four-inch. Looks like two four-inch spruces. What they tended to do was um, document the trees that they felt were on town property or state property. No, there are there are trees all over this property that are documented. There's an eight-inch spruce that, all around 595. Every tree is shown. I mean, I, can, I didn't. My property. My, I'm right next door. There's a there are six-inch twin maple. I can see. Yeah, on I can your see property. that six-inch twin is there. There are multiple trees on your property shown. Right, but not there. Removes small percentage of the total number of trees. Right, but it, I'm there are look what looks like that row of evergreens along the roadway is documented as being one, two, three, four, 17. five. Seventeen. So, yeah, they're all shown there. I have forty. Yeah, but, but even those trees, in the context of this hearing, are more than 25 feet away from a resource area, which makes them non-jurisdictional non to conservation. Well, not non-jurisdictional, but we would allow their removal as part of a highway I think, widening project. I think what I'm hearing from her, and nobody's addressing it, is she's saying the plan is not accurate. She's saying the numbers don't match. That's what she's saying. That's what's bugging her. I don't think they, that this, this I, is representation. Cut or don't cut is not the issue here. She's, she's bugged because it, the numbers are wrong. So clean up the numbers, and I think we probably satisfy this about it. Well, they're working on that. She's going to check. But I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? You know, if the plan's yeah. not accurate, I mean, it if should, I'm on a butter, that would bother me too. It says well, re, uh, remove tree. There's actually a tree line that's mm -hmm. being removed in that location. It's not remotely correct, correct on mine. So I tend to think it's not remotely correct on 595 either. That's what I'm trying to say. So no, I, 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 I don't heard. know that it's incorrect on 595 because I've never counted, but they're as densely populated as mine. Okay. Everybody puts up a double barrier to make sure we stop everything from the highways that are right there. So, um, so hold on. So they aren't removing any additional trees on that lot aside from what's shown at the roadway, which correct. the ones that are in the, the sidewalk? I will ask, because once they do the demo of the building and the driveway, as far as the regrading of the lot, some of the other trees might end up getting disturbed. We can and suggest just not the disturbing them. It depends on the level you want to regrade the lot. So, I mean, we can't keep trees and regrade. It's kind of one or the other. So, so last, last point on snow stockpiling is, is that 
when you do stormwater analysis, you're doing it on a design storm and Correct. the rainfall intensity. Those mm -hmm. rainfall intensities are typically tropical storms that are occurring, mm -hmm. you know, in, in September, you know, in the fall months. That rainfall intensity is far greater at that period, that time of year, than the accumulation of the density of snow in, in liquid form mounded up that gradually melts off, even with the January thaw, even with the rains that we're going to be getting. The, the design storm is so much greater than that, that the design storm offsets, is, is the is driving criteria for stormwater management and not snow melt. Okay. But reality is we flood in the spring. That's what reality is. I don't know when you're flooding. Do you flood in the spring or do you flood other times? I flood, I have flooded other times. Hmm. But do you flood mostly in the spring? Or, or snow, 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 tell you the, the, the way the, the way engineering calculations work for storm water. I, I'm I am more than satisfied that the design rainfall intensity more than offsets any snow melt in, in, in the without challenging engineering doctrine and doctrine from 50 years, other than changing the the the, the, the amount of rain in that intense intense storm. Which I've um, increased, yes. We're not about to change that here at this table. No, I'm just saying what reality is. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just saying that in the spring, when the snow is, they stockpile quite a bit up there. It's a good, you know, 12, 14 feet. And when that melts that's not us. is when we flood. Jen, excuse me, Jen. So we, we've been on this for close to an hour. I think at this point, um, I, I would like to know it. if there's any additional tree removal proposed on 595, because okay. I think that would be somewhat shocking to people if you're showing, you know, two trees removed or three trees on the sidewalk removed, yep. and suddenly they're clear cutting that whole lot. So I think we would we would definitely want to know that. Um, if the plan could be more accurate as to what's being removed at the adjacent house, I think that would be helpful. Five nine one. Yeah, and okay. there was there was one other question we were seeking an answer to. Um, oh, you were going to show on the plan that the driveway was yep. being removed as well. So I think those are some plan updates. Um, and and we can't close until we really get that information. I, I think we would want that information that okay. we can get that information. Um, All right about the tree report to, to the abutters. And I think it's just for accuracy of the record. That's all it's for. Um, I mean, it doesn't change what this project looks like or how it performs or how it was We're not analyzed. saying that at all. We're just saying. Right. And the order is drafted and, mm -hmm. and ready and to we'll issue. And we'll be happy to close this The commission okay. has special conditions. They can review at the next meeting. If I'm not here, we wouldn't issue it, obviously, until I got back. Does a representative from ASTOT need to be present at the meeting for it to be heard? I mean, if the information you they've requested is on the plan, I, that's up to them whether they think someone should be here. You or know, not. someone someone should. We'll, okay. We'll, someone should just because if there's it's one a question, hearing. yeah, <laughs> it, it's a public hearing. And, okay. Yeah, I, I would recommend it. We'll, we'll make it go fast. If everything's all, if everything, if all the omitted information is in there and we have a clean drawing, we can close it. Okay. okay. And I, and like I said, I have alerted MassDOT that those orders there are four of them that are expired and one. Um, I can send you the list of them as okay. well. Yeah, we'd like to address I'll, I'll that. Too. Pass them. I'll pass that along. Um, when is the actually next meeting? in the context of what we've just 14th. been through, that's, that's very important to close those others out. Well, I have conditioned it as we have with other projects yeah. that they would be closed out prior to the start of construction. All right, I said March 13th, correct? 14th. 14th. Yeah. Okay, motion to continue. You have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Who was it? There was whispering. Was Deb, 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 um, I don't think we got no ponds, um, green slips, I don't. so we'll have to get those from him. Unless he included them in the thing, which he may have. From Norse Environmental Services, here on behalf of the applicant, 
At the last Conservation Commission meeting, we were waiting for a DEP file number as well as um, just some minor modifications to the plan. These mod modifications included adding more plants to the restoration area, specifying the number of plants in the restoration area, uh, removing a buffer zone line beyond wetland flag 10A, uh, we revised the erosion control detail, we added a construction entrance, added a stockpile area, and also a dewatering detail on the plan. I don't know how you, you didn't revise the erosion control because it still has the straw wattles on there. Okay. So that's the one I conditioned. So it was the stockpile, um, they intend to use the existing driveway as the construction entrance and then remove the driveway after construction and, and construct the new driveway. Um, and as part of the filing, we also requested a variance from the 25-foot no disturb to remove the existing driveway and propose the restoration area. No questions. They have also said that they can remove the um, foundation drain from the 50 foot no builds. They can pull that back or move it over. Um, that it doesn't it doesn't need to be in the no build zone. Generally speaking, stormwater outlets are only allowed in the no build zone if they have to be there. And um, the engineer said it doesn't have to be there. So we can along with the erosion that. control, I conditioned that that would be removed from the no build zone. So the stockpile area is on the plan, the dewatering is on the plan, um, the construction access will be over the existing driveway. I did, you know, also condition that if they did choose to use a different construction access, just that they would, you know, do the normal, you know, riprap stone apron type. That, that construction access, the driveway doesn't look like a good place to have it. It doesn't what? It doesn't look to be a good place to be. Well, they they have erosion control all along the edge of that wetland. Um, I mean, generally speaking, a, a paved surface is better than mucking up the whole front yard. Right. Would be my. Was there a waiver request? For yes, a, just for removal of the driveway in the 25 foot no disturb zone. Well, even for filing of the plan, not done by PE. No, the the plans. Can't buy a PE. No, registered sanitarium. Yeah. It's not a PE. Oh. I mean, no, if it was just a septic system, that would, you know, we would not take any exception to that, but on a complete demo demolition and I know, I wrote the new construction. I, I know. Here's the, here's the. Well, Joe, my question is with it, with, they're going to use a driveway, that means they're going on this side of the house? They're going to run right over the old septic system to get at it. Oh, I'm on it. Got it. Mm -hmm. It could be dangerous. I hate to see a truck stuck in the old tank. No problem. We're here for construction access. I'm not sure where the old tank is. Yeah. The old tank is right behind the old house. So they won't be driving over that. Right. They'll be you coming down the driveway to access the new field. Where is it? It says yeah. existing system to be abandoned, and it's circled. There's a circle. That's right where you're going to drive in. Right. Driving to the left of that, no, right? The, the driveway's to the left right. next to the A-series wetland. That's why they're asking, That's for, the, they're asking for a waiver. This is in the driveway here. Over here. Maureen, oh, that's the, the proposed driveway. The plans that you handed out, the I'm gray sorry, highlighting, that's, that's, the, that's the existing That's the existing, driveway. that's yeah. correct, that's yeah, the I existing driveway. Proposed, I didn't see, uh, And essentially, we're proposing to remove that entire driveway. But in the short term, use it for access to the, to the That field. was the thought. Um, if that's not satisfactory to the commission, we can relocate it um, back to the commission. That's the only way to get to the back of the house. Actually, it's perfect, right? You usually, otherwise you're running up the mud to get back there to do it anyway, right. so. I thought it was on the other side, so it's the bottom, it's awful close. 
So I didn't notice that I put PE on my order. So do we, you know, why was this done by a sanitarian if it's a well, we had a professional land surveyor show the existing conditions, and because of um, the registered sanitarian, did the septic design just isn't if, the if it was a septic? I mean, our regulations say PE, right? Our registration so or PLS, whichever is more appropriate. But in this case, it would be a, a PE, would generally do a new house design. That's ex exactly in this instance, that's what we would require. So that's why I was asking for the waiver. You know, if it was just a septic system replacement, sanitarian would be fine. But essentially, other than um, showing the new location of the dwelling, doing the deep holes, locating the water table to make sure the dwelling's not in the water table, um, I, I understand that's your regulation requiring a PE. I, I don't feel that this is a super complicated project that would require a PE. Isn't the building inspector going to require your plans to be stamped by a PE? I don't know what the building inspector yeah, will require. Probably didn't notice the seal. What's that? They probably didn't notice the seal. They haven't applied for a building permit yet. Oh. So he's going to, I'm not going to speak, but his concern would be strictly from zoning perspective. Setbacks. So he's going to He's going to want at least a PLS. He's not going to send it there either. Right. So. so I can have the PLS stamp the plan because the PLS did do the survey plan. That was um, Hugo van Dyson. And that yep. would not be a waiver. That would no, meet that our rates. No, that would be in conformance. Yeah. I think we'd better have the record show that. Uh, yeah. We'd accept an IPLS. Any questions, Joe? I didn't know until that one. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a pretty, that's that's a pretty, pretty big, big question. Yeah. That's, that's a... I'm glad you picked it up. That's in the... I, don't, I never look at the stamp. That's right on page one of the requirements. Um, well, I don't have any questions at this time. I, I want to keep reading this. If you want to. All right, I'll, Deb. Any questions? I, I, I just have one. I, I'm, I'm getting the project screwed up. Is this the one that the butter was here asking about the size of the house? Yes. yes. Is your butter here? I don't no. see any of the butters here. From okay. The I thought it was. Because I. I one of the abutters was the insurance company. She just, she just wanted to see uh, what was going on. She's not here. But the other one was. So uh, do you want to continue for this, or do you want to close an issue pending receipt of the stamped plan? Close condition upon this. Well, actually, you still had questions. So you yeah, well, to I think there's another waiver you're asking, right? There's more than one waiver you're requesting. The right? only waiver they're requesting yeah. is the one for access, removal of the driveway in the 25-foot no disturbance zone. So it's just temporary disturbance. That needs to be addressed. That waiver needs to be addressed. We need to vote on it, right? That's what I'm saying. We can't yep. we can't close anything until we talk about that. Correct. So. So they propose to remove the driveway and restore the 25-foot okay. no disturbance zone. At, at the risk of drawing this out more than it needs to be. Is there, a, is there an alternatives now analysis supporting the waiver request? Because if there's Well, the not, alternative would be to leave the driveway in the 25 foot no disturb zone. It's not, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm saying for the record, for our records, we require alternatives analysis to accompany waiver requests. We do, that's what we do. That's part Again, of asking for a waiver. If they were asking to construct something in the 25-foot yeah. no-disturb zone, then yes, I could see that. But to not, to leave the a driveway? The alternative analysis yeah. would be to leave it as is, and the house is closer to yes. the wetland. Commissioner Manzi, in the notice of intent, I do provide an alternative analysis. See, there's my my question yeah. is answered. You, by, by building the new house, you're actually I don't moving have it away from intent in front of me. Oh, yeah, that I was not. Is, I was not given. I can show it to you, you if you'd like you to see it. You weren't here for the initial meeting on this. So, if you're telling me that that was addressed in the notice, I'm satisfied. I don't have an NOI in front of me. So, if there aren't any questions, can we have a motion? We need a motion for the waivers. waivers. If you are in agreement with it. Not reading the record. What other two waivers? Oh, you got it right there. <laughs> Just There's one. only one. 
It's just, just the one. It's that's the. Driveway. It's the one where they improve the no disturbance zone. It, it, it doesn't matter if they pave it in gold. It has to be in there because the next applicant is going to come in behind her saying you didn't, you didn't make that one. Ma Maureen so that's has why, you covered. Well, that's why I'm asking. I'm not trying to be a ball breaker. That's what we have to do. we got to stay consistent. Otherwise, we have nothing but chaos in here. I understand. I'm glad I was able to satisfy your concern. So am I. So I'm satisfied that the request okay, is. You want, to, you want to do the motion for the waiver? Sure, I'll move. I'll move the waiver. Second. Okay, okay we got to keep it simple. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Now the project. No. So the, the next step would be to approve. Uh, Close the public hearing and issue an order of conditions pending receipt of the stamped plan. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is uh, 242 1727, uh, 500 Broxford Street. So, I'm sorry, where do we move on to? 500 Broxford. 500 Broxford. 500 Broxford. 242 No, that was 562 Broxford. That was continuing. The proposal here is to remove an existing dwelling on one of these lots and construct two new dwellings. Um, multiple waivers are requested of both um, the 25 foot no disturb zone, the 50 foot no disturb zone, the 50 foot, uh, the 50 foot no build zone, the 50 foot no disturb zone, and the 75 no build zone to an ephemeral pool. Also, um, the Board of Health has been asked and I believe has granted a waiver of the, oh, actually, no, you need to grant a waiver of the septic system within 100 feet of a um, ephemeral pool or ephemeral pool habitat. Um, you'll recall that ANRAD was done on this site. Um, the vernal pools uh, slash uh, potential vernal pools, ephemeral pools were identified. Um, this is not the right plan. This, um, these lots are not recorded A&R lots at this point in time. This is, um, this is a proposed division of the lots. With that said, I'll turn it over to the applicants. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dennis Grichy. I'm an engineer with Andover Consultants with an office at 1 East River Place in Methuen. Um, here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Michael Donovan, who is with us this evening. Uh, also, Brian Vaughn is here from Smolak and Vaughn, uh, the applicant's attorney. There were some questions about the, the variances that Jennifer mentioned and also the, the subdivision of the land. If there are any questions specific to that, he can probably best answer those. So just to, again, give an overview of the site, and I brought some color boards, which I think might be helpful to the commission to see some of the various setbacks. It currently is three existing lots. They're owned by Michael and his two brothers, individually own uh, a lot each. The proposed, the proposed plan would to split the center lot and create two lots uh, pending the approval of the commission and, and the various other boards in town and create uh, and build two lots, excuse me, build two homes. The existing home and septic system would both be removed. Uh, as part of the ORAD, there was some language in there about removing some uh, historic fill in some of the resource areas that would also be done as part of this filing and any preservation to the resource area that, that is required as part of that removal. There are, as Jennifer mentioned, some waivers that the, the applicant is requesting. The majority of those have to do with the ephemeral pool habitat setbacks. We are requesting a waiver from the 50-foot no bill to a resource area for a small portion or a portion of the driveway and a portion of a retaining wall. 
the the bylaw does say that the those two things will may specifically be allowed by the commission the of course houses decks those sort of things are are not allowed but so we did request a waiver for that we've also requested a waiver from the uh, disturbance within 50 foot of a, an ephemeral pool habitat the ephemeral pools were delineated as part of the anrad process and confirmed via an orad that was uh, issued by the commission i think now is a good time to show the commission what we're looking for so uh, generally right now these the red lines delineate the three existing lots so there's one lot excuse me two lots and then a third lot uh, what's proposed is in the green so subdivision of the center lot essentially to create lot one okay. so as I was saying, there's uh, two lots that will be created. Lot one, which will be approximately 92,000 square feet. Lot two, which will be approximately 90,000 square feet. Two single family homes with the driveway. Each will have a septic system. The blue lines are what was delineated as the resource area. And there's an ephemeral pool here and here. And if I can. So this. 20 scale plan has some of the various uh, buffer zones associated with the ephemeral pool habitat. This first orange line here is the 50 foot no disturb uh, zone of the ephemeral pool habitat, which is 50 feet off of the actual resource area with, that the ephemeral pool is located in. Uh, the proposed work is well outside of 50 feet of the actual ephemeral pool, but we're talking about the ephemeral pool habitat, which is 100 feet within, or within 100 feet of the of the ephemeral pool. So the orange is the 50 foot no disturb. The green is the 50 foot no build. The so the two waivers are requesting requesting the same waivers essentially for lot one and lot two is is the disturbance within 50 foot of an ephemeral pool habitat. You can see we have some minor grading. We also have a driveway here, a portion of this driveway. The homes themselves are outside of the 50 feet, uh, 50 foot, no build with the resource area. However, as you can see, it's a 75 foot no build to the resource area. Correct. So as you can see, the the 75 foot no build because we're within an ephemeral pool habitat, we are requesting a waiver to build uh, within 75 feet of the ephemeral pool habitat. As you can see on lot, both lots one and lot two, we're also requesting a waiver. Uh, as Jennifer stated, we did get approval from the Board of Health to reduce the the setbacks to the septic systems from 100 feet uh, to 50 feet, which is what's required by Title V. So the septic systems did receive approval from the Board of Health, and they do comply with Title V. Uh, the plan itself, the the setbacks, they also comply with the with the State Weather Protection Act. We do understand that the the commission has a a, a higher standard of protection. Uh, which is why we're requesting the various waivers. But we do believe that the plan meets the, the stringent requirement of, of protecting the resource area. Uh, we did uh, follow up with Jennifer and provide an alternative analysis as to what the different alternatives are. As you can see on this site, it is, it's with the, the resource sorry, areas. I, I don't have an alternatives analysis. You responded to a letter with a paragraph, but we have no actual alternatives analysis. The, the response was meant to serve as an alternative analysis. No. Okay. But we can, we can provide something that does satisfy the, the alternative analysis requirement. Uh, but, but as you can see from the plan, the, the 75 foot no build, this, the, the way that the wetlands are in the lot and the way the two ephemeral pools are located, uh, it does limit the, the development footprint. Um, but we feel that you know, the, the fact that there are currently three lots that have been taxed over the years as buildable lots, the fact that we're reducing it to two lots, it is, it is lessening the burden on the, on the area. So I had presented this, when this came to the Zoning Board of Appeals to divide these lots and they sought variances of buildable upland, I presented and I gave you a copy all of my um, letter to the Zoning Board of Appeals stating that 
you know, no project should be approved or granted waivers if it requires, um, you know, another board, if it creates its own hardship, basically, which this project does. They basically divide these lots so that they have to request waivers of you, which is not allowed. All developers would like to see their lots maximized, and but, but they don't because we have laws and rules and setbacks and they're adhered to. So what's not clear to me, and I've heard it several times in this presentation, is the existing condition is a single building on a tract of land that's been divided into three lots under common ownership. No, it, there's, there's three separate can we, lots. Do you have a plan of the existing condition? Maybe it's even the old um, plan. If you've yeah, got this plan may. There's actually four lots. All right, that helps. So the the red line so is delineating what's the existing lot. So there's lot one, lot two in the center, and lot three. And they're separately owned by, by three brothers currently. By three? Three, well, separate, three separate entities, correct. Okay. And, and they're all, and they have been taxed. And where's the existing house? The existing dwelling sits right here. So that's the existing building, OK. Right. OK, so what you have there now is a compliant house on a tract of land that's subdivided by separate ownership, mind you. And zoning allows the creation of non-compliant, non-buildable lots, which is what you have. You've got a house on an existing lot that's compliant for, the, for its day. But by consolidating those lots into a single, or consolidating and then subdividing to create I guess it's lot line adjustment is what's really happening to create what was three becomes two. Mm -hmm. You are in fact creating your own hardship. I hate to say it, this thing's DOA. I just see no way around it because you are you. We can't grant waivers on something they've created. Correct. I mean, we just had this issue at, at 271 Stevens Street when they decided to subdivide their lot. We exactly. told them you can't create a brand new lot and then come and request waivers of us, which. And they, they had to comply, they, and they, they did. They had to comply, and they did. Yeah, the, the, this, this is DOA as it is. I mean, that's my opinion, and, and it's rock solid. I, you've got nothing. Well, I, I mean, no, my, my motion no, would be to nothing. deny I waivers. Mean, they, they do have an alternative, <laughs> which is to construct a fully compliant house and septic system on the lot that they have. Correct, but that's not what's before us. No, no, gotcha. Just saying, there are I'm alternatives, this, yeah. but we haven't seen those alternatives. <laughs> this right. is the only thing that's been. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I really apologize. I know a lot of effort went into this, but but the fact remains, you have buildable land. You are, certainly can use that lot. You need to comply with zoning and board of health and planning and us all together and seek variances where they're allowed. But it, the the variance in the basis for which you're asking waivers from our regulations of things you've created on your own. We can't do that. I, I just can't do that in crazy consciousness, never mind sound well, consciousness. Not to mention, even if you know something were granted, there there's requirements for mitigation for on two to one of anything that they impact in, in and no these place to do it. And no place to do it. Yeah, so I mean I've I've said my say, my piece, I'm all set. So if I could just interject, I mean, yeah. In terms of creating our, our own hardship, from a zoning perspective, um, we've actually, you know, we, we have an existing hardship, and part of that hardship is, you know, shape soil topography from a zoning perspective. And soil is a hardship with, with each of these three lots, and it's compounded by the fact that, um, you know, it's it's not as though it were a single parcel. There were three separate lots. There were also other zoning nonconformities that are being cured. From a zoning perspective, um, we're resolving and eliminating a lot of hardships. Granted, there's a balance between the the interests of conservation versus um, interests of other boards, but I don't I don't think it's necessarily correct to say that we're Creating our own our own hardship, maybe specifically for well, and I don't mean and I, I apologize. Yeah. I should give you a say, but you've taken you've you've your alternative, the one that's before us, and apparently there are other alternatives that we're talking about. Your alternative is to take what was three and make it two, and, and ameliorate zoning issues as best you can, but at the expense of conservation regulations that you need waivers for. 
our perspective is an alternative two, which we haven't seen, is do the same thing, take what was three, and make it a single lot, and we can, you've got a buildable lot. So without waivers, and, and that solves the zoning problem, it zone solves our problem, and it probably even zone solves a waiver from the Board of Health. Yes. And, and, and it, by, by virtue of the alternative you've selected, that's the creation of the situation that requires the waiver. It is the hardship that's self-made. I, I have no desire to consider that. The second house was supposed to go. I mean, there's a five acre lot across the street. Guess what? It has one house on it. You know, we, we just divided lots out on Mill Road in Johnson, which um, um, the Resca property, which <coughs> I'm sure with all that acreage, they would have wanted more than four this, houses. This is Pandora's box of wood. Right. It crazy would, it would to make this. everything we do absolutely impossible. Make everything I've done for the past 26 years here. Impossible. Pointless. But, but, but one. How long have the three lots existed? 1970s and I was gonna say that's the one difference I would say is across the street you have a five acre lot here we have three separate lots each having been taxed as developable lots the exact situation in Stephen Street yeah, they could they from could the have 60s, sought, from the 60s from the 60s right I looked at a house today in uh, Raleigh five acres there's a river in the back that's it one house there's no way, and I didn't even flag it or walk it or, there's no way. That's all you're going to get is one house on five acres. I, I apologize for my tone, but I can tell you that in, tw in 26, or well, nearly 26 years of sitting at this table, I have never heard anything like this that's so far-reaching from a waiver perspective that, I, that we could have ever considered before, and we've heard some I think Stevens was the most recent and the most well, controversial. I mean, I think one. I think waivers have been granted on on existing lots where the houses have existed since the '50s or '60s, where we that's just did it. One. We right, just did one. 562 Boxford is very similar to this, but you know, it it it's a house being rebuilt, not new lots being turned into. So let me just ask, Council. So you said there were three lots, but. What I'm hearing is, is that these lots are newly created, which I'm not understanding the difference here. The two lots. There, there are three existing lots. As far as you, you're talking, like as far as the assessment. Yeah. Prior to the current owners. Yeah, but there, there are three. Yes, there are three existing lots. Okay. If you look at this, this and, lot right here, right? I mean, they may have been taxing that as a buildable lot, but the truth is. That lot was is never has never taxation been has nothing to do nothing with it. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> Zoning allowed the creation of lots. Yeah, assessment yeah. allowed the assessing of taxes. Yeah. So hold on, let me let me just let me. I just yeah. want to understand. I just want uh, I want uh, uh, council just to. Right. It's what it I want to have it clear in my head. Right. Right. Um, so, so they can create the lot. There were three lots historically. Yeah. Zoning perspective of area area right. frontage and stuff like that. Can I just one second? There was four lots originally. My sister built on her lot. Just a little over an acre. But I guess have, what, have these lots been owned by the same pe same people no. since the, they were created? They have not. They've been owned under individual uh, individual owners each lot. That makes it even worse. But well, the, way, the, the, the three lots that currently exist, you got one house, one lot on it, on one of the lots, which can you? Certainly, stay in probably view model and what have you. The other two lots are not buildable. Well, hold on. Before As we, they exist. Before we get that trees. farther, what I'm trying to understand, if if three is this similar? Like when we had 271 Stephen Street, we had a lot with a second lot that was created by a variance in the 60s, but the, the variance had never been acted upon, so it, it expired. So when they went and refreshed the variance, they now were um, required to comply by the by the rules of today, which. Um, Essentially, caused what we what we determined to be a self a self proposed hardship because they they had to refresh their variance and it was it wasn't locked in it wasn't grandfathered. Is well, that this the, didn't this didn't have a variance before so it, it was is, just three lots. That, I'm asking, but I just so I have it clear is that the case here? No, what I see happening here yeah. is they have one huge lot yeah. that was three. Wide enough. In other words, three lots were created out of this one thing that at the time they were created, they were legal and buildable because the conservation wasn't in existence back then in the 60s. Yeah. And so at that time, 
you could do it. And they met zoning, you know, as far as the area in frontage is concerned. So they can be created. Now the people, I think, realize, hey, they only built one house on it. They realize, hey, so I just they're not going to be able one. to build houses on the other two lots as they currently exist. So they're trying to make the best of a situation that has and try to get two lots out of it. I understand your summary, but you used one phrase that I would have to disagree with because I, I don't think it was proven out as is back in the day in the 70s. I'm not sure the test of whether they were ever buildable was ever tried. They, they, they had three lots that, pro, that may or may not have complied with zoning. If they allowed them to subdivide it, they would probably have to comply with zoning. But that all by itself doesn't make them have, buildable until, the until you go to... Zoning regulations back then, but I suspect they were created and put on paper and filed in the registry and all that. They met the zoning requirements at the time. But doesn't run, that alone doesn't render them buildable. No, right. but conservation didn't exist, so that... What well, was the Protection Act did in our local conservation commission, but we didn't have but a bylaw. Not in the 60s. But we didn't, this wasn't 60s, this was 70s. 70s. You said the 60s. That we'll refer to that other one. since the 60s. That no, other I, one. I was the one that said 60s. I was talking Steve about Street Castle. I'm sorry to confuse you. I thought that the attorney said 60s. I, I did not say 60s. No, he wasn't. He was, I was trying to get a question no, to him. No, this one was the 70s. Um, but I, I guess what I'm doesn't asking, matter. so what I'm asking is, they didn't require to, they didn't have to refresh a variance to create these lots. These lots were already created, is that right? There are three, lo three lots out there right now that yeah, they're that trying exists. to combine into two. What's it trying to? Okay. And they still not there. But, the, but it, it, according to this notes here, they require uh, ZBA waiver for buildable upland? Right. right, so trying to create these two lots, they still don't comply. So they, before creating them, they went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and sought a variance for contiguous buildable upland, maybe among other things, I don't really know. But that was the one that was of most concern to me because contiguous buildable upland usually has a pretty good correlation to wetlands. Um, and so my comments to the Zoning Board of Appeals at the time were don't grant waivers to create lots that are then going to render them and that problem. process is still open, or has no, that been completed? They, they granted it out of like four to one vote, I believe. But that's neither here nor there. They can grant the waiver; it doesn't make that make them buildable to us. Well, just, that's the point I'm keep trying to drive home: is is within the context of zoning, it still doesn't make a lot no. buildable. I, I was just informing them that co the proposal that was currently in front of them was not buildable but according to conservation regulations. Okay. Okay, I think I understand. Okay, thank you. I have no. I, I'm in concurrent with uh, Mr. Lynch that they're not buildable. Doug? I am as well. Doug? Hmm? Any questions? No. Okay. So, how do we get. So, we're going to do a motion to deny? Oh, motion to, I don't think there's anything they can do. Well, well a couple of alternatives that. The, that works. We can leave the hearing open, or we can close without prejudice. Yeah, and let them to, yeah we got to. Mm. Yeah, hold on. Unless they insist on going I mean, to the we, we could continue you for two weeks, four weeks, and give you a chance to look, take another look at it, rather than denying it. Give you um, a chance to go back to the drawing board. Sure. Okay. I, I mean, we, we would understand. Welcome the opportunity. Understanding um, the comments that you're hearing. But as of now, right. as you know, of now, as proposed, it's denial. So as proposed, it doesn't look good. So. Um, perhaps there's some way you could yeah um, give, it, give it fresh eyes I don't know so we, to get two lots out of it they're not going to I understand but you know something I, I I've been on the other side of the table I, I always like somebody to give me a way out so, <laughs> so we would request continuance um, I think four weeks would probably four be reasonable weeks. to four weeks would be better yeah. so move second, second. Dennis, did you give me the green part, the, the butter? You may have already given it to me. I just know. Oh, I should have asked. Because you weren't here at the last meeting. Are you in the butter? Are you here from the, in the back row? Is it the butter? I am in the butter. I own the five acre lot. Come up here. Are you all set? Hold on. Uh, I, I know. I saw him waving his arms. Just, just come up to the podium for us. We. Chris Kalora's 525 Boxer Street. Hi, Chris. I, I live with my, my wife, Michelle, across the street. But this committee, in its infinite wisdom, has answered all my questions. Um, I just feel that uh, if you look at the plans, I'm just, 
very concerned um, the doubling. Right now, there's an existing vacant house that's been there since the 40s. Um, and there are extensive wetlands and there are culverts that run underneath Boxwood Street. One of them does uh, empty directly onto my property. And I have no idea, you know, what sort of impact uh, doubling two houses, two septic systems, two wells across the street would have to my property. But I agree with everything that you've, that you've uh, said, you know, and I'm not opposed to any alternatives that they might come up with. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other about us? Want to be heard? Yeah. Not answer, Mr. Chairman. Do right, you want to speak? Yeah, when he built this want house. To, want to come up? Uh, when he built this house. Uh, just, just tell us, if you would, just give us your name. Mike Donovan. Mike Donovan, okay, thank yeah. you, Mike. Yeah. When, when Chris built this house back in, in the 80s, Gary Thomas was the owner of the land. 1999. 1999. I built my house in 1985. Either way, um, Gary Thomas came over. Thank you, guys. Who owned the property at the time, subdivided, and um, myself, my brother, my mother all signed a letter of support to bring down here to the commission so he could build his house. He's literally on the wetlands. He's 50 and feet. And the uh, culvert. His, the his culvert, plan shows him 50 feet away oh. from, from the wetlands. So okay. the plan, Five acre right, the culvert that drains into his property is totally blocked at this point. I have a picture. Excuse me. Excuse me. Is this gentleman speaking? Yeah. I have, we have just it. It's been filled in. The side that's on our side, the pipe is completely open. You go to the other side, there's this much pipe showing. It's been built in with one three over the years. Yeah. So just do about that part. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. No. Okay. I was going to say I did review the file from 525 across yeah. the street yeah. <clears throat> when originally proposed yeah. his driveway was in the no build zone um, to get his plan compliant you made him move his his driveway out of the no build zone into the other side of the house so his lot at the time did fully comply with the setbacks okay. so, so, so we, well I remember that specific filing we holding the same consistency in this discussion yes no waiver, exact, yeah. you made him move it to the other side. Okay, so they're, they're going to they're gonna come back in four weeks. Gotcha. Okay. And um, I think we voted it, right? Yep. Okay, no, so we made the motion. To we continue. Voted. It. Oh. Did we, we vote? just moved it, right? Did I don't we, think we voted. Did they vote? Did we vote? No. Did vote. Ah, yeah, we voted. So yeah. so you guys are good. You come back in four weeks. Did I just say one thing? I'm just, just, come just up, If you don't mind coming up to the podium, it'd make, uh, make me very happy. I don't think we've seen you in 15 years. No, it's not 15. It hasn't been 15, you're right, it has not no. been 15. Um, Elsie Puglio, 465 Oxford Street. Uh, in 1951, my father purchased 12 acres of land, which is directly across from the Donovans. And in 1985, my mother gave me four and a half acres. So I have a house on four and a half acres, and that was in the 80s. I didn't have to go before conservation. I didn't have to go before um, zoning Board of Appeals, it was a pristine piece of property. No wetlands involved. Of course, it has changed in 30-some years. And my brother was left with approximately seven acres of land, seven and a half, whatever. And it's always been family land. And when my daughter got married, my brother offered her part of his seven acres. And that's where the five acres went. It's 499, I believe. They went through everything, and that's what they built on. And my brother was left with two and a half. So here we have 12 acres of land with three houses. Okay, and as far as I'm, I have, I walked today the culverts. There has been no dumping by my property. So I am tired of being confused. Con um, What's the word? Accused. Yeah, okay. Because they did the same thing at the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I wasn't able to make it because I was in Newport, Rhode Island, and I had called the family and told them I couldn't make it. And then they went and accused me, or accused. I don't know who they accused, because one, one culvert um, 
affect my brother's property, which has been sold because he passed away in four, four years ago, so he hasn't been dumping. Uh, and that culvert also affects my end, and that's where my wetlands have increased from that culvert. And the other culvert goes on to my daughter's land. And also, that culvert abuts 537, I believe the address is. So there is more than just the Thomas Polio land that's involved. It's the 537 that's involved also. That is right near their driveway. In fact, today, it wouldn't pass. Okay, so I just wanted to correct things because I'm the one that built the house in 85, and I didn't have anything to do with any of you guys. Okay? Thank you. 12 acres of land, three houses. All right, the next, next one we have an enforcement order violation. Hold on, so just, just so the applicants are clear, we did close, we allowed comments. We continued. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, we continued, we allowed comments from the abutters, um, and you could probably use those comments going forward when you consider your options. Um, Dennis, are those the yeah, mailings? I just want to, can I, just, can I send you a photocopy of these? Yeah. PDF? I just want to make sure they're all there. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Council. We have uh, enforcement orders, and I'm going to defer this to uh, the Vice Chairman, Mr. Manzi, because he's done the site reviews. Uh, one of them, oh, I don't know if he's seen the Winter Street. Uh, we've got Dollar Tree, 25 and 46 Dollar Tree. So and since, I don't know if he's been up to Winter Street. Well, since the, the, the last meeting, I mean, the, the 25 Hollow Tree and 47 Winter Street were at the last meeting sort of considered the same violation. I've so, since issued an, uh, an enforcement order to 487 Winter Street. Um, I don't know if anyone's. Oh, okay. Oh, you're you're the tree cut logging company, but we asked 487 Winter Street the. So. Get the name. Jen. Uh, Jen. Ads. Orient me here. Is 487 the neighbor of uh, 25? Correct. 47 and 25 so, are the abutters they share? Uh, okay. So we had asked for a restoration plan from yeah. 25. And yep. so when 25 went out there, um, sent their consultant out there, they determined that not all of the violation was on 25 Hollow Tree Lane and that okay. they were going to keep their survey to 25 Hollow Tree Lane. <coughs> okay. So at that point, I issued an enforcement order, which I would ask you to ratify, to 487 Winter Street. Um, okay. And so I don't. I think anyone's here from 487 Winter Street, even though we asked them. Their letter said they should attend. Yeah, Can you get uh, back the green card on that? Yes. <coughs> so so we, have, we, have, we have 25 and 46 here, right? Yeah, okay. All right, good. And we have general, a representative from the company? Um, yes, Mr. Thank Armstrong you. is from Trinity Thank Logging. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, so Jen, where, where are we other than issuing enforcement orders? Has, has progress been made at all with respect to restoration so or anybody trying to... We have to a restoration plan from um, 25 Hollow Tree Lane. You have a, um, uh, okay. The Fixels have filed a, a restoration plan. Um, yeah. You have, should have a narrative and plan in front of you. Okay. So um, without getting into the weeds on this thing as to... Oops. who did what and, and who, who authorized and who didn't. Um, the restoration plan for 25 Hollow Tree proposes to start when? So currently the, the, there are a few issues with the restoration plan. Um, Mr. Hockmuth's here from who prepared the plan. Okay. Um, the current discussion is that um, they would just uh, allow this to, to regrow. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I went and took a photo today, but unfortunately I didn't get back to the office in time to print it. But the um, most of what was cut out there was, was pine and oak, two species not known to either regenerate quickly. And I mean, this lot is decimated. There, there are not many living things currently on it. It's um, been heavily tracked and logged, and things have been dragged through it. There, there is no sign of, you know, there may be sign of life come spring, but it isn't going to be in the I was just going to say, it's, it's, of it's, trees. <laughs> it's, it's not showing anything right now, but no. it's, it's still, it's only, you know, February 28th. You know? Right, well, I think but the, I, I'm I think just saying. the bulk of what you saw oh, was on 487. Uh, and, and spring so is coming, kid. That yeah. is part of it. That's, this, this restoration really can't be complete by just considering 25. 
the majority of what occurred out there happened on 487 Winter Street. So, so, so the photos, just so everybody's clear, the pictures that, that are here that we're looking at on pages three and four, those are uh, joint, uh, th that's the lot that's jointly owned, or there's a line somewhere in the middle between 487 and 25, am I right? That's Correct. So what you see highlighted on the plane. Because you and I went out and walked it. And when we, we walked it, we didn't know that at the time. We couldn't find it. We thought it, it was oh, 25 okay. Hollow Tree Lane. Okay. We were out there with the owner of 25 Hollow okay. Tree Lane. We thought it was 25 Hollow Tree Lane. We've since learned. So Greg you only represents. See, you can see where that big square is, is where the current log pile is yep. out there. It's clearly within the, the ownership of um, okay. 487. So Greg, Greg's just here with his client, the fixers, right? Well, me. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, you've been out there, you've had the yeah, advantage. Yeah, I, I haven't, I'm, yeah. so I'm unclear. We've had one agent contract a landscape, a logger, whatever, yeah. who's done all of the activity that's out here that's affected three separate lots. Yeah, it was one company. I don't was... know if, I don't know if, and I, it doesn't really much matter, it's affected three separate properties, but what I don't know is whether those properties owners were all acting in concert with each other and said, while you're here, can just all do this together? Or did one person hire that person and, and the other two lots are simply the victim of trespass? So, I don't know that. So we don't know that, and I don't know that that's our, our problem here. Um, I don't know that that's up for us to, to decide. That well, I think we do have 45 that's Hollow nice Tree Lane. Know. Just to make it clear, 45 Hollow Tree Lane, the owner is here. He's admitted yep. that he hired this company right. to no, work we, on his property we, and that he does have a violation yep. and he plans to restore yep. it. Um, That's what I'm trying to understand. As to it, what happened here, this is where um, legalities become involved. Oh, no one's... Get some information from the tree cutter. Well, hold, hold and I want to, so, oh, we want to understand that when Greg maintains a position that I'm only here to address my client, if it was in fact his, and I'm suggesting I, I know better now, if it was in fact his client who hired this person, I may be his more aggressive. His client claims no, that he did not hire. Okay. So, so I just want to understand that as Greg makes his presentation. Okay. This, is why, this is why I'm trying to clear it up before we get started. There's a lot of directions we can go in here, right. and, and, and there's a lot of them that we probably ought not to go in. Um, what we should be worried about is the restoration of the property. And each property owner is um, responsible. The, the, each property owner, and, and if they after all chase each other around or chase the logger or whatever, that's, that's not our... That shouldn't be Correct. Um, our issue. E even if there's an allegation of trespass, we don't hear trespass here. Right. Our, our concern is the restoration of the property where the, where the cutting should not have been done. Correct. That, that, and, that, and I think we've got to stick to that specifically. We can't get out of our lane because so we could be here for four more hours. All of the cutting on these two lots is within the 100-foot buffer zone. Got it. No, got it. But, but, uh, but only some of it needs to be restored. Well, that's up to you. Well, no, that's up to the wetland science. The science should drive the project. Well, the, the issue is it's all within the 100-foot buffer zone. It was all forest before. You know, if they want to file to have cleared a portion of their lot and keep it clear, that's a whole different process. Right now, we are only acting under an enforcement order, which allows for restoration. We can't permit tree removal under an enforcement order. Okay. We are only addressing restoration. I hear you. So, which one do you want to hear first? Do you want to hear we Greg have, first? Um, right. We don't have anyone from 487. Well, we have, we have uh, the owner of 46 here. Well, he's not going to Well, I'm just there. saying, as, as it goes on the list of enforcement orders, 487 Winter Street was first. I had asked that you ratify so not, that enforcement order. So 487 is not here. you want to be done with that. All right, you want us to what, rat, you just ratify. Right we ratify the enforcement order. We'll get through this. Ms. Hughes. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous. All right, so 40, 47 the, is ratified. Right, and next on the agenda would be 25 Hollow Tree Lane, and that's Mr. Hockmuth is here to present That's you. Sure. Good evening, Greg Hockmuth from Williams and I want you to take note of the time, Mr. Hockmuth. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so I'm here representing Larry and Joan Fixler, um, who have, have told us, as well as the police department, that they did not hire the logging company to do this work on their property. I know you don't want to talk about that, but I did want to make that statement. Okay. So they feel as though um, there's been a major violation on their property. Uh, they understand that the commission has a responsibility to ensure that that area is restored, but they would like the commission to um, take that into consideration when whatever is proposed and ultimately approved out here is. Uh, so 
We got a copy of the enforcement order. The enforcement order required a survey of the property as well as a wetland resource area delineation. And I could see why there was some confusion. Um, when you're standing in the road looking at the Fixler's property, it, it does look like they, they should own that chunk of land that's next to them. There's a funny angle, the lot line. I'd say 90% of the clearing that was done next to their house was on 487 Winter Street. Um, I'll go through the photos in a minute, but I just want to talk about the plan a little bit first. So we, we actually staked out this lot line <coughs> in the field also in case the commission had a sidewalk that could see where that line is. Um, our surveyors located all the stumps that they could. It was difficult to um, get an exact count of what was removed, but we feel like we've got a pretty good idea of what was was cut out there. It, it amounts to about 10 mature trees, um, half a dozen saplings, and numerous shrubs. But the, the shrubs and the ground cover are, are still pretty much intact. They were driven over, some trees were dragged over them. But I do expect the shrubs and the herbaceous growth to come back. So that really leaves the trees. And what the fixers would like to do, and I, I think it makes sense, I talked to Jennifer a little bit about this today. Uh, we agree that regeneration is not a guarantee, but I, I do expect a lot of these um, hardwoods to, to come back. Um, there was some hickory, there was some oak, there were a couple maples, and I think we counted two pine. The pine won't come back. One of the pine you'll see in the trees was, was already dead, ready to fall over. Um, so that really leaves us with one pine that probably won't grow back. Um, so we were proposing to just allow it to regenerate, keep an eye on it for, for a couple of years to keep invasives out of the area, and hopefully have it grow back. And then we also wanted our clients to have the opportunity to put in more species if they decided to. Because at the end of the day, they do want their vegetative screen back. Um, they don't want to look out their window and see a barren wasteland. And I think this commission would want to see something in there as well. Um, because it will provide shade to that resource area. There's a large, extensive BVW out here. And there's another um, wetland across the street that looks isolated, but it, it connects via Culver. Um, there was some stream? question, too, about whether there was riverfront. I ran stream stats. Um, the stream out here isn't large enough uh, to, be, to be deemed perennial. Um, and there's, there's, there were no um, channels observed within 200 feet anyways of where this violation occurred on their, their site. There is a map theme of floodplain out here. It doesn't look like any alteration was made to the floodplain, at least on our client's property. Um, one thing we have on the plan as well is a proposed stockade fence just to help demarcate that lot line. Um, Jennifer had asked us to stop it short of the 50 foot. I talked to my clients today. We can certainly do that. Um, and we also need to get a survey stamp on this drawing. Um, it, it is a survey drawing, uh, but it wasn't stamped. We weren't sure we needed to where it was uh, for an enforcement order, but we'll go ahead and do that. But in the photos, I'll just go through them real quick. So, a quick description before we get into the photos. Um, <coughs> I think Jen just took the picture down. Oh, you want it back? Um, I can map. take it back. It, is it easy enough? Yeah. I do want to say there's a lot of convergence of lines here. But the only 25 foot no disturb is just this yes. little finger right in here, right? That's right. Everything else is outside the 25 foot no disturb. Yes. Or even outside the buffer zone. Actually, it's all buffer zone, isn't it? Yes, yeah. And, and if a notice of intent had been filed for most of those activities, I would have expected a permit for it. So that's where my mind is going as you were about to rip, rip up photographs is the issue of natural revegetation or doing what they want with future plantings or fences or whatnot, if the result of the enforcement order is to file an RDA, and not even RDA, but a notice of intent, to permit this, they can do what they want and that their part of the enforcement order is satisfied with a waiver of the 25 foot or maybe well, just revegetation, a restoration, of, a restoration of just that small area. That's right. where my mind's gone. Right. That might be the cleanest way. In lieu of planting. In lieu of planting. And then it's yours to landscape because it's permitted. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So you, by all means, I'd love to see your pictures. Sure. So the, um, 
if, if I can come up to it, might be easy. Come on up. So this photo here was taken from the, the fixer's house is behind me, looking okay. down towards 487. Right. Uh, most of the clearing you see is on 487. You can see this dark green area here. That's all Pachysandra. Right here? Was, yes, okay. that was growing down Which the photo hill. are you looking at? Um, oh, the, the top one, it's a little green. Jen, uh, I'm just trying to pull it up so yeah, you're talking and one, they can see it. what. The top one, I got it too. Yeah, score. So this area here is the Pachysandra? Yeah. Oh, you right in here. So you get, and that was, that was noted, that's in this area here on our plan. So although it shows alteration in the commission's jurisdiction, really it was just some shrubs and a couple small saplings. So you can see the ground cover is still intact. And I expect the shrubs to grow back. No, it's all pepper bush. It's pretty, pretty hardy stuff. The picture below that is, is standing in the back of the Fixler's yard looking towards the log pile. And that's just another angle of that, that area down here. But I have a good shot of this, this area back here that's in the 25 foot no disturb. And that's the next, next picture. That's the dead pine I was describing in the back. You can see it laid down. That would be within 25 feet of the BBW. And that other large stump above it is probably right on the 25 foot line. So you can see all the shrubs that are still intact around it. The ground cover is still intact. I do expect that to come back no problem. But this would be a good example of a, a spot where it may make sense to put a tree back if that stump that's closest in the picture doesn't regenerate. Um, but another idea was thrown out there too to perhaps look at this area during the spring growing season to see if there is any regeneration. If there is, then maybe the protocol that we proposed makes sense. If there isn't, then either we file a notice of intent or propose some some additional species. Um, one question real quick. Photograph one, the first one you showed, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of limbs right there. Yeah. That, that's, that's typical of a, of a cut, but it doesn't need to be. Is there any proposal? So that's off-site. That's not on 25 So that's the neighbors. That's the, that's the neighbors, okay. Yeah, the Clear first uh, sapling that you see yep. lying down is yep. roughly where the property boundary is. Okay, received. Got it. You said Louis. spring. I, it, in general, this is as much for you as it is for the applicant's engineer. Um, if we were to consider the enforcement arc a action to remain for another 120 days, at which point you must file a notice of intent, that would get us four months out into the growing season. What's going to emerge and leaf out will be evident, but what it won't do is give it enough time to totally regenerate. I mean, you know, emerge three, four feet out of the ground. That would take it, you know, maybe one or two growing seasons. So what did you have in mind of that threshold of where the NOI might be considered? Well, I, I think we'll see some signs of life early on this spring if, if it's going to happen. If it's not, if it, it happens right away if it's going to happen. If it, it's not going to happen. It's it's just not. I think we'll know by definitely by summer, early summer. That's that's where I grabbed that 190 day number out of 20, 120 days. 120. Yeah. 190 is a whole different. 120. Yeah. And even you know, started with 90 and it pushed it out another month. <laughs> there still are scattered trees on the Fixler property that will provide some shade. But their fear is that it's just going to get riddled with invasives. And, and they want it to grow back close to what it was. They, they don't like the way it looks now. Right. And they feel like they're going to be looking at that for quite some time. Unfortunately, Which, they're looking at their neighbor's property. Right. I think the lot line was a surprise to a lot yeah. of people. I mean, I, I, cause I'm surprised. And I was out there on, on the scene. And uh, I'm surprised at how much of it belongs to the neighbor. So yeah. you know, they can do whatever they can do. And they're still going to be looking at. Oh, we're still getting the force when we're against yeah, the winter street. Yeah, their next deadline yep. is March yep. 16th, I think. I'd have to yeah, they just the file. Did, yeah, okay. We can cut them the same deal as, as uh, Greg. And the problem that our clients are having, too, is you know they, they may not be able to recover any of the costs that they've incurred as a result of the survey, mm -hmm. my work. They're working with attorneys. 
at the end of the day, they might be responsible for paying for all of this. It's something they're going to pursue. It's not something the commission needs to be concerned about. But right. you know, another notice of intent. It's more work. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask that question. Why? Uh, maybe I'm being naive, but why is an NOI re required for a restoration? Because they're not proposing restoration. I think what we were talking about was if they were allowed to Just keep it maintained. But they want to put a fence up, and they want to uh, they want to, <coughs> they want to first see what happens, and then reassess it. But why does that have to be an NOI? That doesn't. No, that's why I think we were talking. As Joe was saying, we would continue um, to the to the second June meeting in 120 days, and and reassess. Whether restoration or, you know, if they don't want to do restoration, then would an after the fact notice of intent to allow them to keep the area or landscape the area or do whatever they wanted with the area or restore the area if, if it isn't coming back, I think was the. I'm just, I'm just suggesting that, that we could accomplish that without an NOI in this case. What vehicle would, would, would you use? Would you use an, I'd, I'd an RDA? I'd stick with either. I'd stick with the enforcement order. Is it a small project? Yeah, but there's no re what there's we're saying no is you can't you can't permit this activity. You with enforcement orders, what? there's there's two ways to go about it. One, you allow restoration under the enforcement order. The enforcement order becomes the vehicle, but you can't permit land clearing under an enforcement order. So if you allow them to keep the clearing, you basically just permitted that under an enforcement order. Well, I think that no, in, in, not necessarily. Yeah. With the exception of the 25 foot no disturb, no, uh, uh, surrender on that. We would have no problem. Landscaping of yards and clearing of brush. Clear within certain within certain criteria, is this is this a small project? No, it's not a small project. I'm just trying to find the easiest. It, it, it appears it's also easy. not their doing, and I don't see why we should penalize them. I just think they're responsible for your property. We, <laughs> we, we, you know, if we get into the he said, she said of this, and you can do that, I, I'm not going to, yeah. it's your decision. But if you, you have to treat everybody the same. You can't give, you know, them one deal based on, well, you, it, we can, you said you didn't hire the landscaper. We can handle all three the same way. I mean, I don't. I, Just let let them keep. I, we know, can. We that can, sets a lot of precedent for. Well, I do think for, this one may be different than the other two. Only because when you go out there and look at, just the amount of clearing and alteration that was. I can't speak for the other, uh, property on Hollow Tree because I wasn't out there, but you can stand in the Fixler's yard and look down at 487 Winter. And you can see dirt. You can see it's just trees were dragged. The ground cover was demolished. There's barely any shrubs left. On our client's property, it's, it still looks like a forest floor. There's some shrubs that were knocked over, but they're just bent. Some of them have scrapes on them. They're going to come back. Uh, but there's no real loose earth, with the exception of a small area out near the road out here where some logs were dragged. And I think that may have been an area that was partially lawn to begin with. Uh, so I, I do expect. Again, this doesn't necessarily pertain to 25, but you know, if if you allow this to remain without restoration, then I'm not, I'm not saying any the anybody else who goes and does this is just going to be like, well, that's what no, happened. No, it on has to be permitted lane. using the proper vehicle, either per whatever it is. Either permitted or restored, or restored. under an enforcement. We order. have we have approved restoration plans on this commission right. that have been proposed that we're going to go in and just scrape the ground and see what comes up and in cases we've approved that this is I would submit to you the evidence suggests this is not necessarily their doing and we should be trying to help them out not penalize them into an NOI an NOI is going to cost them another $5,000. I'm, I'm stopping a little short NOI. of what you said, and only because I don't think we should be, and you, again, you, you're the one who convinced me of it to begin yeah, with. Yeah, you said uh, don't we, get involved in yeah. it. He said, she said it. Like, and I agree, well, and I, I agree. You're, you're right, and I said it and I mean and it. I think in 120 days we'll, we'll know whether this right. is going to come back or not, and we have that discussion then. I think, right. I think you've got great likelihood, without anybody casting any blame here, that if this thing restores and we're satisfied it's restoring on its own, I think we really are, are only dealing with that 25 foot no disturb area and see what happens there as well. All right. 120 days, not 190. I'll say it again? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, you did. 120. You uh, Mr. Wiley, have you done anything on your property as far as a, like a weapon sciences? Yes, right. well, are you with him? 
No. Okay, okay, we, 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 come no. up here. Should we get rid of Are this we one done first? With this one? We gotta get rid of this one first. Well, they're all concurrent. Well, well no, you I gotta need to deal with them separately. Point, no, they're not. Greg, would you be um, amenable to continuing for until the second June meeting just to, to have a site inspection at that point and see where we proceed from there? Because we can continue the enforcement matter for however we want, yeah, however that's, long we want. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah. Could we could we continue to the next meeting just so I can talk to my clients about possibly putting together a, re a more detailed restoration effort for the 25 foot no disturb? I think that will help us. Yes. I'm not at the next meeting, so maybe you want to wait till the I'll be 28th here. meeting. You'll be here. I'll be here. So if you guys want to talk about it without me, just let me know what you say. You can call. Well, you're going to yeah. be in, you're going to be in Japan, right? I'm going to be in. Japan. We'll be sure to let you know what's going on. Okay. So continue <laughs> to. She was in Iceland. She watched us. Continue Man. to 314. I'll be watching. So 314 for for 25 Hollow Tree. Three. And the um, I just have one more quick question um, with regard to the fence. Is that something that they'd be able to install this this spring? Um, they're anxious to get some sort of a screen in there. You, you're talking so installation of okay, so yeah, that's, that's installation of a fence probably could be a small project, except it's on a property that already has a violation or an IDA. So I I would say no. It would be whatever comes out of the. Let me look to Jen. If it's outside I was saying if we if you were permitting a restoration plan and part of this was that they wanted to to put up a fence that we could probably do that because you um, I, I had told them to keep it out of the no build zone because I didn't think they should be going into areas where permitting may be requ required but um, they might not want it. We're going to wait till June. So why don't we let them come back what in a couple they weeks? Want the fence no, you to screen the, to the mess. So they don't have to look at. Look the, at this. Uh, clear cut. That's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's and that's what a clear cut looks like. Um, so what what do you want to come back in two weeks through? Yeah, I, I have to revise the plan anyways right. to get the fence out of the no build, put a stamp on it. Two weeks. Right. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it without me. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you. All right. So hold on. Wait. So motion and second. Motion to continue. Excuse me. So we. Yeah. Can I have just a couple minutes of your time? Yeah, it, it actually, um, just want to clarify with Jen, and we won't can. go to the vote yet. The um, is the enforcement to clear that there's no other activity out here, no removing right. of slashes, there's nothing right. else. He's, all right, I just want to be sure. Okay, I'm all set. All, all right, right so the, the, if you don't mind, uh, you can either take a seat at the table here, or you can go to the podium and just whichever way you want to do it, um, whatever makes you comfortable. Just tell us who you are and. Uh, <laughs> My name is James Armstrong. I'm the owner of Trinity Log and Elaine Fair. Hi. I work by myself. Um, when I was hired, it was by 46 to do the clearing the behind the house. They yep. wanted to, you know, eventually change and make a lawn or whatever they wanted to do. Yep. As I was working there, um, toward the end of it, it was getting rainy, it was getting muddy, his yard was getting muddy. Mr. Fixler and his wife had walked down to my job a couple times. Um, so because he was there, I had stopped, walked over, and said, can I help you? And he's just curious about what was going on. What we offer is a free tree removal service. In most cases, it helps the homeowner. They're not paying thousands of dollars for tree removal. And we sell the lumber. Um, it's a win-win for both of us. Granted, it's not really free for them because they do have clean up, brush, stumps, whatever. Mr. Fixler says to me, he says, well, I've got a lot of these trees on the edge of my property. They're all growing in towards this house. And most of them were decent-sized oak trees. And he wanted to, he said, I'd like to get rid of them, but I don't know how I can do that without, you know, tearing up his yard. He said, well, why don't we take a walk and I'll give you some options. So we did that. We walked around and the option was where the log pile is, where the landing is. Um, yes, it might have been on the other people's property, but I'd already, they'd already contracted me to do some stuff for them. And the trees that were back there, they didn't care about this. So you take whatever you need to take. Um, I don't have the name with me right now. It's uh, it's probably in my folder. 487 went to the folks that are not here? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Thank you. So anyway, you. that's the two fixers and the, and the uh, buddy each other. Where well, they have the joining yard, okay. Yes. Yeah. So we got rained out. It was muddy on that job. Mr. Fixler and I had walked all around. Uh, about the time we were done walking, his wife showed up. He talked to her about it. Um, and they said, yes, when it, you know, whenever you get started. It wasn't a situation where there was a lot of big timber. I was going to try to help this gentleman out. There might have been 1,000, 1,500 feet of logs. 
you know, and some pulp firewood, not a lot. Uh, the first few hours, first day I worked there, him and his wife would come home, and I could tell right away that his wife was upset, you know, that it was opened up. Mr. Fixler and I started walking around the yard, and uh, his wife went into the house. I could see her. She was standing out, looking out the kitchen window on a cell phone talking to her husband. Mm -hmm. And she's upset, and I said to Mr. Fixler, listen, let's, I don't need to cut any more today. Let this set. Talk to your wife tonight. If you want to stop, we'll stop. If you want to finish, we'll finish. You know, I don't want you guys unhappy. At that time, we did stop. I went back the next morning. Mr. Fixler said, you know, my wife's really upset. I would like to stop the cutting, just clean up what we have. I did that. He was right there all day with me. Um, I had moved back down the street, and he come down to see me. He says, can you please come back for a minute and just try to push some of this brush back? Sure, Mr. Fixler, I'd love to do whatever I can to help you. That's how it went down. You know, he was with me the whole time, Mr. Fixler. He wanted it done. I don't know where they come up with the fact that, you know, if I was going to go steal timber, it would be on a lot where there was some timber. I was, you know. Okay. I just wanted to say my piece. I, where's, your, um, where's your company based out of? Uh, Albany, New Hampshire. Albany, New Hampshire. Do you do yep. a lot of work in Massachusetts? I've been in Massachusetts the last three years, sir. Then you understand loud and clear that the Wetlands Protection Act, you violated. Your stock and trade as a professional land clearer is to understand that. You violated, regardless of this story I just heard. It may all be true. It may not. It's not within this realm. What you've done is no different than a guy building a deck next door who the neighbor says, hey, while you're here, I need my stairs fixed. And you strike a deal, you go over to, but he didn't pull a building permit. You, the work that you do causes this, and it's a violation. And whatever deal you've just had tells me you don't know what you're doing in Massachusetts. And that's a real problem. And we aren't going to sort through whether the fixal is by virtue of a verbal agreement entered into a verbal contract with you. It's not our problem. Our problem is this mess that you created on several lots, and that's the fact, and that's what we're dealing with. Uh, whether that story you just told has any basis in any other form or venue in the future remains to be seen. But um, there's a hell of a mess out here that has to be cleaned up, and I can't imagine even even the guy that hired you by his own admission needs a permit, needed a permit, whether his intention is to landscape it or not. He didn't do that. You're the contractor there. That's why we go after the landowners and not the contractor. The, the landowners might go after you. I have no idea. But what you have out here is a mess, and you shouldn't be working in Massachusetts. Your Honor, I mean, excuse me. <laughs> um, you know what? My ignorance of the law, I apologize for. I never intended on doing anything wrong, but I will tell you I've learned a lesson. I have a, I'm meeting with conservation on another job in Massachusetts on Friday. Same type of deal near wetlands. Um, when I went looked at the job, the people, I told them, I said, I'm not getting involved because of this stuff. It's just not worth it to me. They got to hold the conservation. The conservation is going to give them, you know, so many trees that they can cut. I didn't take the homeowner's word for it. I'm going to meet with the homeowner and the conservation on Friday at 9 o'clock. So, you know, I apologize for any inconvenience for you guys. My intention was never to cause problems. It was to help people out. Um, that's all I have to say. I just wanted to say my piece. That's the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you showing up. Um, all right, so we've we've got Greg handled. There's nobody here from 47. If you want to hear from the homeowner, uh, Mr. Lally, if you'd like to just, I just get it, get it, come to the podium myself. just for a minute. Uh, so just prior to Mr. Lally speaking, so Jen and I went out and met with Mr. Lally on site. Um, he w has been very forthcoming with us. He hired Trinity Logging to log his property. Um, there was no pre-construction or pre-cut meeting with anybody from conservation. Uh, he wasn't aware that it had to be done, and according to Mr. Lally, when he spoke to Jen and I that day, he told us that the logging company had a gentleman, part of the crew, who assured them that he knew wetlands and knew the wetland, wetland laws and assured them that he was keeping the cut. Out of, the, of course, that's not what happened. but. I'll let you. I'll let you say it, but I remember that conversation we had where there was a. You said there was right. a gentleman. It, it on, was. It was him. Oh, it was this guy yeah. here. So, anyway, the, the gentleman that just spoke. So, oh, just I, to keep this short, Mr. Hmm. Lally um, con has engaged with a, a wetland consultant and, and a firm mm -hmm. to do the work on his property. I believe it's it's Hancock, Han correct? Yes. Um, 
he is asking for a continuance um, for the for his restoration. He's also an endangered species habitat, so he has to file with MISA. Um, he is there is riverfront on your property, which is different than than the other property. He's kind of all the way around on, on that stream system, so I think that there is some riverfront potentially. Um, but I'm assuming there. You have a date for them to do the survey? So or they they're, they're in the process of doing the survey. I know they sent one of their, their associates out um, a week or two ago. He was walking around the whole property line with the GPS and looking at stuff. Um, how, old so you, how old is your house? It was built in 1977. Sorry, sorry, okay. yeah. all, all, I don't I know just, about the Hadats on I winter, was just curious if there would be any plans on record, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. too old. Um, yeah, I think things were different in 77. My, my living room was inside the no disturb zone right now but the um so he came out start to do the survey uh there is a beast filing that will have to take place although the hancock had spoken to somebody at the state and they said it's actually not that bad there's a different form we can use for that but that's that's the state uh piece of it um the and mcmenemy at hancock has asked that for the continuance because what we want to do is figure out exactly what has to be done with the state and also the town, instead of doing two separate plans, then finding out they, they contradict or conflict each other in one place, just do one combined plan that will work in both places. Okay. Um, I guess big picture and long term, the plan is to restore whatever is in that 25 foot buffer zone. We would like to ask for a permit to everything outside, uh, essentially just to landscape grass bushes. There's so never this was- going to be a full blown NOI. So, so your, yes. your, yours yeah. would have to be a notice of intent for what's outside the 25 for everything, you want, for everything you want to do. For the whole scope of work okay. that you're asking for. Because you're in the buffer. Based upon your mm. presentation, you're in the buffer zone, you're in estimated habitat for, for mm. uh, rare and endangered species, um, and, and even the cutting in from the 25 to the 50, mm. that all needed to be permitted. So you need an right. NOI for everything, but uh, that's the way to go, and that's the smartest way mm. for you to go. Because you, yours, not to mention, yours is like an acre and a half of land. And it's it's yeah. a big... I'm not sure exactly how big it is, yeah. I bet you I'm close. I'm, I might be. I mean, you know, I'm not off by. He's a father. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I grew up in Everett. Every plot of land is about the size of the. Yeah, I got you. I, so I, I, I would like to, um, given that mm. the land is still disturbed and yeah. we have very spring-like and wet conditions, that limited amount of erosion control they put mm. in, I don't think is adequate. I mean, there's just like two. I kind of anticipated that they would run it along the disturbed area, so. Um, and they, uh, okay, they so the, the they, associate, when I was out there, I had asked them because they said, I told them, they said, you know, the town's had erosion control. I don't know, I mean, I understand what erosion control is, but I didn't know, didn't know what the intent was. And as he walked around, he kind of said, well, you really have, he told me I had no erosion problem. He said, but if you're going to put something, this is the spot closest to. That was the spot um, closest where the, to the wetland. Where the sewage drain, not sewage, but. Um, where, the dra where the drainage the, the is. Drainage, the kind of drainage, the drainage runs off from the, the grates on the street. Yeah. Uh, so we did that at that spot, but the rest is. He thinks is, is he, not going to have an erosion issue. No. He didn't think I'd have much of one there either, but he said put it in just to be safe. Okay. So. Who was this that was talking? He One works for him. Hancock. Yeah. I yeah. forget his name, but yeah. Yeah. Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. So, uh, normally you would tell them where you want your erosion controls, right? Right, and I had specified the kind of erosion control, and that's not what ended up out there either. But so fix it. That's right. not the. Yeah. <laughs> it's the plastic netting, coir logs, which we don't allow. Oh, you said it was hay. Yeah, we right. It, I said it was supposed to be a compost or a bark mulch sock, okay. I think, but it okay. isn't either. So. Yeah, it's important because it shapes the land better. Yeah, in the first conditions, it's right, important yeah. because of the shape of your site, mm -hmm. and also because we don't want any uh, indigenous, I mean, non-indigenous species being introduced with native hay. Okay. Right, or or you know, I don't know what the species is out there for for Mesa, but you know, if it's there's vernal pools or critters crawling around, everything gets stuck in that mesh. And it's, two weeks, the turtles will be on the move. Right. I'm not sure turtles would be an issue, but um, Evidence just revealed. anyway. I write things. Okay, some so some people read them. So, what's he need? Um, at this point, I just like to come out and review the erosion control. But mm. you, you asked for a May date for your I continuation. I believe that's what what Hancock asked for you. They didn't. I didn't get anything in writing. So I know she said she called today to try to talk to you and, and left you a message. Oh, so didn't like. <laughs> 16 other people. She called me after and said she knows you, you get busy on these days, but yeah, she's yeah. hoping you, um, she talk so to you. A likely I, story. I don't know which uh. date she wanted, but what's... Do you have our May, May meeting schedule? 
I just have one question for you. Um, the, the tree cutter mm -hmm. mentioned the fact that you wanted to make a lawn out back. Mm -hmm. And then we've got riverfront. Everything. Well, well. We've got buffer zone. I, I was told that's intermittent, but I will, I'll wait for the survey to yeah. come back. Yeah, don't do it. Actually, that do really starts down a good road. If you're going through the expense of permitting this activity, mm -hmm. Go through the same expense and yeah. ask for what the hell you want. Yeah. If it's a yard, mm -hmm. if it's landscaping, when, you know we may yeah. say, you know, we, we may say no. It's too much that you're asking for. But if if you've got an idea of what it is you wanted it to build, this is the plan to do it. Get that same permit for that as well as this problem. Because yeah, I don't. Oh, there, know, there's I don't no know intent to build anything. There never was. Well, I don't know what he said. Just, no. just grass and bushes. He's yeah. talking about yeah. lawn and shrubs. And yeah. I don't know what a 25 is. He might lawn right to the wetlands. Well, he doesn't know. So, so we need Jen to talk to Hancock, mm -hmm. and you need so to. So May 9th or May 23rd would be the continuation. Right. Why are we continuing He's, he's that doing long? a full-blown delineation in Note 710. Hancock so. asked for it. Okay, well, there's a lot going to happen in that time period. Um, that's going to start growing out there. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whichever one you want. So, with so whatever one they want, I'm well, not. I'm so not. continuing. To May 9th, but I think the obligation of sufficient erosion control and, and, mm. and monitoring is yeah, that's is, going to be contingent. It has to be ongoing, right? If, if, if a long a long extension, that bit, the, the erosion control better be it, the way you want it. Right. I, I can I can put in the I can change that out and put in the correct one and contact Jen within the next week or two, just yep. to uh, say you better, you better wait till after Sunday. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I'll, I'll be in town until Monday. I'll be, you can get me Thursday, Friday, or Monday next week, and then not for two weeks, so. Okay, I'll, actually, I think I'm going the same two weeks, so maybe okay. after. <laughs> Right. I'll, I'll I'll get out there and make sure we're not because it's going right, to so pour buckets. The, so Monday I'm going to visit you anyway, just to make sure that. Give me the date again. You want May May ninth. May I believe so. I believe that's okay. What you said. May 9th? Yep. Anybody feel moved? Move that we continue to May 9th. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. And then the only other question I had is at, at what point can I begin, I guess, cleaning up, removing the pile of trees that's in my front yard and the brush in the backyard? When when you present to us. Okay. Yeah, so you see, you really can't do it. That's why I was yeah. asking if you wanted to come in before May 9th because you can't okay. do anything. What you, You're in a holding pattern right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Except for erosion controls. Right. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> the next, the next important step is going to be in touch with this Winter Street character. So nobody from Winter Street responded. Did you, did you make contact with them? Um, oh, we did get. We just mailed out the EO last week. Yeah. And we did get back a green card saying okay. that they signed for it and received it. I did. The order did tell them to be present at the meeting tonight and that their next deadline, I believe, is. March 16th for the May and uh, March 28th meeting that they would have to have their plan and delineation to us. Okay, uh, the, so the, the, the enforcement order has to give a, a date certain for them to comply with it, what? Well, attendance was required. Okay, so let's get past that now. Right, so if we're past that, then the next date is. Um, Did you say the 28th? Then March 28th. It's the March 28th meeting, but their submission is due to us by, I believe it's March 16th. Now, do we understand, are we, are we just, I'm just using this for my own reference here based on what I'm going to do next. Did 487 actually participate in hiring this guy? According to the, him, yes, him, yes the, the tree okay. company. All right. So, and is the log pile still out in the street? All the log piles are present. So they're complying with our cease and desist cease order. And desist oh, has okay. been All right. Adhered to. All right. Um, so I guess then we have to compel 47 to get here. So um, they need to. If we don't have their plan, um, I can inform them that their presence had been requested and they did not attend, and that if we do them not. Them or their representative. Right. Um, but that we, if we do not have their plan by March 16th as required, they will be fined $100. $100 per day. a day. That's, yep. We're not going to fool around with this thing. No, no, because we have two of the three that are trying to be that's what client. I'm, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And the fourth yeah. and the third one is not. Well, he, and he I probably mean, has the worst. In his defense, or that their defense, they did just receive their enforcement order. I, I have to admit, everybody who received they the enforcement order. They probably don't know what to make of it. Right. I mean, I, maybe, these folks didn't either, well, but they I'm, did something. Well, I'm guessing that they've heard already that um, there's I, an I, issue I'm out so there. I'm got to tell you, everybody in the neighborhood knows what's going on. 
Okay, I've been out there. I've, I've walked around and spoke to the neighbors. Everybody knows what's going on. This is not secret. <laughs> There's nothing covert about this. No. Right? No, it was pretty obvious. Painfully obvious. Yeah. There's log piles everywhere. <laughs> okay, I got All right. it. All right. Um, anything else? No. Nope. It's back to you, Lou. Okay. All so, good. Mr. So Chip. you have this one decision, right? Two. Oh no, you're right. We didn't do mass out for. Why we didn't? I don't know, but I'm not going there. Um, two four two seventeen twenty seven. Thanks, Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. What number are we? 1727. 1727. This is Summer Street, I believe. I don't. I can't even find my stuff here. What are we Summer doing? Summer Street. So we won't be issuing Would this until I get my revised plan. 1727. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So which they're signing this one right now. Um, 1727. Decision. So, need revised plan, stamped, need stamped plan. Put that on here. Um, so, uh, 33, agreeing with the offsite delineation and the buffer zone to cast onto this property, not approving any offsite flags. Um, 25 foot, 50 foot established from the BBW. I do state in condition 34 that a waiver for work in the 25 foot no disturbance zone is granted for removal of the driveway and restoration of the zone. Um, they agree to remove um, debris and soil piles and restore the 25 foot at the B series well and at the back of the property. That's condition 35. I do specify the compost or bark mulch filter sock um, backed by siltation fence, which they proposed when they had the silt sock, but not the straw wattle as shown on the plan, condition 45. Um, <coughs> standard for a single family house has been what, over the years 3,000. I think we've begun doing 3,500. This one contains. Um, demolition and restoration, so I, I bumped, it to bumped the 4,000. Um, they, they're marking the no disturbance zone with posts. Um, this one's not, because it's kind of weird little half moon shapes in the yard, we weren't requiring stone walls. Um, I think we discussed that at the last meeting. Um, I did condition number 55. Um, is it 50? <coughs> Oh no, 54, we've got an extra space in there too. Um, the property will have a foundation drain system installed for the detail on the approved plans. The drain outlet shall be relocated outside of the no build zone as required. Foundation as built, condition 57. Um, they had straw wattles for their dewatering ring too. I said no, they, we want the standard ring of hay bales with filter fabric and crushed stone, condition 59. Protection of stormwater inlets, 65. I don't think there's any catch basins in Summer Street, but just in case. And then all our standard, no dumping, no fertilizers, underground fuel oils, et cetera, in the perpetuals. And that's that. Um, on condition 61, I think yep. we have a demolition of both uh, existing house foundation in driveway, we probably should say that um, all residue from the demolition of the house and driveway shall be removed from site and, and contained in containers. I think 61 typically applies to the import of materials, but we also don't want anything from the demolition ending up there either. Okay, we'll do. Uh, unlike the, Thank we you. just saw the state, they were only going to so. get half a foundation. Oh, we That's ridiculous. I know. That's ridiculous. You're going to drill holes in the floor? That's still ridiculous. I, There's I was, more labor intensive sensitive to do it that way. What are we doing? We, we shifted gears for a minute. What's <laughs> on us. We just, oh. we were on Mass Ave. Okay. To take a foundation down just below grade and leave it in the ground is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. 
Focus, focus. I know. Well, we've got to okay. make Keep sure that. Around. Are you focus. are you well, approving this sure for me? That the, the condition sixty one is is. Uh, on mass, I'll I'll update. No, no. On See the diff one. the difference here is that there's a new house going on top of that same site, so the building inspector is going to make him take it out. All right. We, we're not so getting long, a partial demolition just, here. Just as long as somebody doesn't have a brain fire. They, oh, I saw the state only has to do half. When our own DPW removed the north pump station, they left the majority of the foundation underground as well. I think we allowed it, though. They, yeah, we did. We, they requested it, and we, and we specifically allowed it. Right, so I'm not it. saying it's not unprecedented. We've yeah. done it, and that's yeah. right next to our water supply. I don't think I, there's anything wrong with it later, we'll if, it's, the, uh, if it's done appropriately. I mean, I, I don't think it's... It's their spec. I'm guessing they've done this elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. okay. So are we approving this order? Yes. Yep. As oh, amended? Motion. Yes. So moved. We have Sorry. Segundo. Segundo. Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Yes. Motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. All set, mister.